Thursday, May 17th. I invite you to join with us in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In case of fire and the alarm sounds, there are two ways to exit this chamber. Uh, to my left and your right, the, the, through the double doors, turn left down the stairs, and at the bottom of the stairs, turn left again and outside of the building. Or perhaps the quickest and best way for you is at the rear of the chambers through the double doors, and there again, uh, just down the stairs. But in either case, once you're outside of the building, please walk a safe distance away from the building. Secretary, will you please take the roll? Charles Duran. Present. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Guillermo Salazar is absent, and Richard Suzak is here. Uh, and I guess all the regulars are here. All right. Uh, Uh, approval of minutes May 3rd. Any so additions, moved. errors, or motion? Uh, Can I make a motion? Second. Well, second. Can I second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any additions, errors, or omissions? I have a short correction here. Uh, one, two, three. Fourth line down, a fourth paragraph, it says Second Vice Chair Charles Ladd seated, alternate commissioner. Linda DeGray for the absent commissioner. That should be, she got seated farther down in the program here. It would have been, I would have been seated at that time. Right. right. And Actually, then. Actually, nobody was seated at that time because we just finished roll call and we didn't announce anything. Okay, but the votes, <coughs> the votes did require seating. And the votes would have been at least for the two motions, the one to change the order and the other two Seat okay. Commissioner DeGray. So we can see you. I would have been seated in that, and I abstained <coughs> from both votes. Okay. So it was 601 for the those two motions. Okay, so that should be seated alternate commissioner. Um, I just blanked. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah Gruber. Sarah, Sarah Gruber. <laughs> Bring farts. Okay. Anything further? Hearing none, all in favor? No, wait, one, one more. Okay. On page five, uh, second sentence, he went on to this to state that the prior restaurant had a full liquor and should have license in there. <coughs> it sounds like it was just a bunch of liquor. That's all. That is it. <laughs> okay, anything oh. further? Hearing none, all in favor as amended? Uh, six zero one, uh, one abstention. Okay. Public participation. Uh, public participation. At this point in the meeting, Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions relating to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who is present, provided no one may discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on this agenda. Any matter that's part of an open public hearing of the commission or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending. Anyone would like to address the commission under those conditions? Anyone would like to address the commission under those conditions? Last call to address us under those conditions. Hearing none, we shall move along. Uh, there are no bond releases and Old business is none. We're up to new business. Public hearing 29. Mr. Chairman, could I just uh, could I just comment on the bond releases? Yes, sir. Uh, Shaker Shaker Heights. Um, the Mr. Um, Lloyd has again today um, asked when he could get the bond back that he believes that he bought from the prior owner. I have it again informed him that bonds are, would be released to whoever posted the bond, uh, so that would be the prior owner. Uh, but in addition to that, 
there is no record in the town of Enfield of those bonds being held. So um, I just wanted to once again. Have they been released? Uh, there's no record that they were posted. So um, he keeps asking for the bonds to be uh, back. It was four phases. You remember the original Shaker Heights was right. four phases. Right. And each bond was posted as the phases went along. And the fourth phase, uh, which he's asking back for, was never built out under the prior owner. So at this point in time, we have uh, uh, apprised him once again that there's no record of those bonds having been posted. Uh, if they were being held, it would be the prior developer who would ask for them back. Um, so I'm just keeping the commission apprised. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a public hearing again, 2961 Pleasant Street. Secretary, please take the roll and read the legal notice. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. <coughs> here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 17, 2018 at 7 p.m. in Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2900, 61 Pleasant Street, special, special use permit application for a second driveway. Connecticut Square LLC owner applicant, map 27, lot 14, residential 33, R33 zone. Is the applicant present? We come forward, sir, and please explain to the commission what it is you plan to do. Well, this is, this is I sit down and use the microphone. We'd like your name and address, please, for the record. Plus, you're on television, so. Okay, well. <laughs> Michael Donskoy, uh, uh, City Square LLC. It is just with this Pleasant Street being done this year. I like to get it's for family house building, and there is only parking for two cars. So with this Pleasant Street being done this year, I found a perfect opportunity to build additional space for the tenants to get them off the street, pretty much. That's all. It's a double wide driveway, right? Yes. So it would be more than two cars. Yes. Yes. Questions from the commission? And I just was down there the other night, yep. and I see your dilemma. Yep. I mean, it's a four-family house, and probably when it was built, not mm -hmm. everybody had a car. They walked to work. Mm -hmm. um, but there are parking lots not far do they okay. use utilize those at all no no because you know they always having issues especially with the plow trucks you know they always had issues you know because i see that you know that you know they had the tickets they had it you know like not everybody moving the cars right away, no no so. i'm talking does the tenants currently utilize those parking lots that are like no they currently utilize the streets they much, just you know? use the yes Okay. But there are parking lots, what she's talking about, yes. there are parking yes. lots throughout the town that they are supposed to use. Yep. Uh, but but there is no sign, do not park on the street, and they always park on the street next to the house. I mean, that's that's the issue for, I, I guess, it's for them, for me, and for the town, too, when they're trying to plow the streets or, you know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I, I was just wondering yeah. if they currently are using, utilizing those parking lots at the end of the street. Well, they're using probably in the winter time because I would assume they they probably using in the winter time because somehow you know when the plow truck goes through, cars not there. But most of the times they park right on the street. Okay. So. Right. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, anyone else? <laughs> well, my my dilemma is is in a, in, in a, our planning se uh, sessions recently, uh, we're talking about. Uh, changing that and then uh, are changing <coughs> some of the requirements for, for number one and also uh, parking was just denied the, the same type of parking was recently just de denied to an ind individual downtown so 
it, it, we realize you have a problem, or I realize that you do have a problem downtown, but it's you have a problem, but so don't, or so doesn't every other citizen in the in the area. Uh, my dilemma is if we start at one, what happens to all the others off street? I mean. It's a lot different nowadays, yes, with the car from the old horse and carriage or the barns that were down there where you could store the, the horses and the carriage and you have narrow roads. We realize that. Uh, so it's sort of a dilemma. Because is, is it possible that, you know, because right now I'm just looking at the, your plan and, you know, there's a relatively large, you know, driveway length adjacent yes. to the house and and when when two cars are actually pulled in there's still room behind those cars for additional cars and and obviously it gets into a sequencing problem in terms of <coughs> it's not convenient to have you know everybody move a car when whenever they want to move a car but it, you know also you know looking at the <coughs> fact that you know, you know, it, it's you know the, the, the planning and, and the door we open once we start you know looking down this certain route that, you know, we're, we're trying to make it convenient for everybody and and you know the thing is, you know, obviously, what what we're trying to do is is conform you know the area to what's there, not necessarily force things that that once we're you know approved into you know something and, and, and then start down a, a path that you know we might not be able to, to turn around and get out of so so I, I think that realistically you know if there could be some way to work out you know some kind of a sequencing in, in turn of parking I know it's not going to be easy and and I don't know if, if there's a dedicated you know two slots for the, the right two tenants and two you know the, the left two tenants don't have a slot or you know how that works out or is it first come first serve you know how does that work right now in terms of does does two tenants have a parking spot and two tenants don't or does everybody get it the first come first serve uh, two tenants have two tenants don't yeah because you know I mean I, in the past, I tried to go in this path, and there is always going to be always been an issue of he have to move the car. He didn't move the car. He parked. Right. I mean, it's 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 it's. Um, but 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 yeah. but when they took that apartment, they knew they didn't have a, a parking spot. They yes. they you know so so basically you know if we were downtown Hartford, it'd be the same thing where you know if you know if you had an apartment anywhere else and you know you didn't have a parking spot and you had to park in the street, you just learn how to park in the street, and then if the snow plows did come, you know, you'd have to move your car to, to the lot, you know, to the, to the parking lot where, you know, it wouldn't get towed. But, but there's, a, there's an alternative in, in terms of it's just inconvenient. But, you know, that, that might be the nature of the beast where, yeah. you know, the thing is, if we made everything convenient to everybody, you know, it, it, everything would be such a mess that nothing would ever, you know, make any sense. So somewhere down the line, yeah. you know, there has to be a little bit of inconvenience just to, in order to get along. Or else if everybody got everything that they wanted, you know, it, it, you know, there, there'd be chaos everywhere. So, you know, I, I can sympathize with you, but, you know, I, I think that, you know, if there was some way to, you know, replace whatever you're trying to propose with some greenery, or if you, you were going to be, you know, using some pavers instead of blacktop, and, and, you know, there was grass in between the pavers, and then you were going to plant some trees in front of your house in, in order to, you know, offset, you know, some of that, you know, then something, you know, possibly might be worked out. But to think that, you know, we're, we're, you know we should just, you know, make everything convenient for everybody because, this is what I want, and this is what I need, and this is what I should get. You know, I don't think that that's kind of the mindset that planning does. You know, because y if if that happens, there's no planning. It's it's chaos. No, I understand, and uh, you know, I do have a lot, lot of green space in, in the backyard. You know, there, I do have decent sized backyard, and it's again, you know, when you're talking about it from a tenant's perspective, you know, they, you know. People, they find other apartment with a parking lot and they leave. You know, what, what I'm trying to avoid it, to look for new tenants and <laughs> new problems, people moving from one apartment to another all the time. Yes, it, it, is, it is convenient for tenants, convenient for everybody. And, you know, there is a room which is not used at all right now. There is a space pretty much, you know, in the corner, not used at all. So that's <clears> why, you know, 
Yeah, but but, but, but that, that's part of you know what makes a, a neighborhood a neighborhood is the fact that you know there there is quiet <laughs> space there is you know relaxing space there is green space and and it's not all asphalt which you know and would make a, it enhanced you know the, the neighborhood versus if you started paving everything then you know it really doesn't you know create an atmosphere that's conducive to you know relaxation and and you know brighten things up it just darkens everything and, and makes things so. You know, I, I, that's the, the concern that I have is, is that, you know, once we go down this path, you know, where do we stop? Okay. Well, well, there is, again, there is like more than 50% of the land is green land still after even the pavement. You know, there is a lot of, it's not like something, you know, there is area and there is no green left. There is a lot of green on the, uh, behind the house, on the side still. But, you sir, know. the... the, the, yes, the, the Citizens in the rest of the town can't see your backyard from the street, and to make the house and the properties uh, visible and scenic, I guess. Uh, and uh, we're trying to the wildwood plants are planting plantings and trees and so forth, and not just a landscape that is bare. And, uh, Kenny, I, I guess I'm in total disagreement. Thompsonville is nothing but a parking lot mess. And in the wintertime when it comes to plowing, these people have no place to go. Telling this man that people, you know, have to have tension between them to get along, I never heard of such a thing in my life. And he does have a full backyard. And he's coming here at his own expense, I would take it, to put in a second driveway to try to fix a problem and relieve tension. And to sit here and tell them that it's not paver or there's not enough grass or anything, we're not wetlands. We're planning and zoning. And he's here on his own trying to solve a problem that is a major problem in Thompsonville. The town of Enfield tears down buildings. When the Strand, if it gets torn down, it's gonna be a parking lot. If it doesn't, we're gonna need parking spaces. And he's right behind it. So I, I, I guess I'm totally lost as to why somebody willing to come in, pay to put a second driveway in a four family house, he's not asking to put a parking lot in a single family house, he's trying to accommodate one car for each unit, I think is a total reasonable request. And if you're worried about the greenery, greenery have them plant a couple trees in the front yard to solve the problem. But I have to support this 100%. I just, I've owned many properties down there and I know the problems. Um, I just had a question. I noticed in the engineering there was a question on, um, you know, the uh, the road's going to be redone, and so they wanted. Uh, I guess John wanted um, just to hold off until. Yeah, right. but I didn't see it in the conditions of approval. So if it's approved, that might be an additional uh, item. So okay. that well, when, oh, John right. Tribble, they're replacing when, the when catch we, basin. Down, right. John wants town staff to do it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I think that should be an additional condition. Well, yes, because he's having a, uh, a, a sewer. Yeah. Port, the yeah. And that wouldn't hold sewer. anything up if it got approved. You know, it's just that you wouldn't be able to start until the town went through and put in the catch basin. Well, the catch basin would be changed probably anyway in the re yeah. road absolutely. reconstruction. Yes. Right. So yeah. right. Not, I was unaware they were doing would, the road. I would not, not want to see uh, them right. the start yeah. if he gets approved. I would not want to see it start before the town has a chance to do that. Well, I don't think he probably would want to because they'd have to. Uh, they just get dug up again. <laughs> get dug up again. Well, yeah. I, One of my requests is actually, you know, if you look at the details, it's actually replace existing curved basin mm -hmm. with the flat basin. Yes. So that's going to be part of the whole. That right. would be part so of the reconstruction, which would right. save him some money, because otherwise right. he'd have to do it himself. Right, but we, we wouldn't want him to start until the town did that. Yes, I, I understand. Does he, does he have property in front there that he could put in some trees, some trees or bushes or some it kind looks of like plantings? It. Can't I, tell by the pictures what he have. No, no the there. pictures. Don't well, show there is me a lot anything. of trees. There is a lot of bushes actually in the front of the property itself. You know, hmm. you know. I mean, it's it's all whole wall pretty much in front of the house with the bushes right now. 
I, I guess I, I couldn't agree more with with Ken here. I mean, I, I I laud the commission for what we're going, what we're looking at, and workshopping these the greenery in that area. But the state of the regulations now is not what is being asked, and this is a real problem. I do you live in one of the units in that property? No, I'm not. So it's not his problem. He can't speak to the inconvenience. He's merely inconveniencing four other families. And that's not a mere inconvenience. That's a huge inconvenience. I would say that this is solving a big problem for the town when they plow, uh, for drivers, for safety, and a whole number of reasons why we would allow this in the past without requiring the planting of trees. So I, 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 I understand this to be a real inconvenience, and you're confirming that for me now. So I, you know, I would wholly support this this proposal. Well, no, I, I. Same thing for me. Um, I absolutely think that it's necessary um, because of the nature of Thompsonville and the way it has it was built. It was built as a place where people walked typically, and we have people driving cars now. We have somebody having providing housing for people to live in and being able to have that where you don't have, in essence, the liability to with regards to people parking on the street, so on and so forth. And I think that it's important in my mind that, you know, we do this, I mean, coming here at your expense to make this, to solve a problem that helps, I think, everybody in essence. And um, I think when it comes down to it, I'm also not really necessarily in agreement with the tree thing. I don't necessarily believe that that's, that is pertinent to what we're looking at at this specific moment and the way our regulations are, so. I, I'm not asking for the trees, but if that would satisfy uh, Rich's request, I, because yeah. you know the tree issue, it goes as far as, you know, Bigelow and Hartford Avenue had beautiful old trees lining both sides of the road. And when the town went in and did the roads, they cut them all, down, all down, and it's I barren know, yeah. now. Yeah. And so, you know, which way do you want it? You know, we can't plant trees and then have the town cut them down when they go put a road in. That was beautiful old growth down there that's gone now. It looks totally different, so. But I don't understand the applicant's site plan to have trees currently that are being cut down for this. No, they're not. So, so in essence, it stays the same except it gets some cars off the street and otherwise doesn't change at all what it would look like. Mm -hmm. So to me, this would be an additional requirement that I'm not sure is, is called for in this instance. I, I agree, trees would look great in Thompsonville, and, and that's certainly something the commission should consider in the future. But right now, with respect to his proposal and the way his, his land currently is, I don't see that as necessary, but that's of course up to the commission. Right, but I'd rather have a tree put in and get him to pass than have him lose by one vote because there's not a tree if that's what it's gonna take. So either way, I'm good with it. I also say, uh, so I don't believe we're setting a precedent because most precedent, precedent, because most of the uh, houses downtown don't have a yard wide enough for more than one driveway anyway. So you aren't gonna get people come and say, I wanna put another driveway in if they only got 10 feet. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. this is where he wants to go. This property okay. has a, a good yeah, size span there right, for that. Right. Yeah, so. most of them on Pleasant Street drive around the back of the house and they park in the well, backyard. That was another another thought no I yard. had where you could put, put a four space in pavement here. in the back and use the two yeah. main driveway to get there. That so would be the other solution. But that that would be a little more expensive than doing this. And why would you ask for more expensive if you don't have to? Well, that and the kids playing in the backyard. Backyard shouldn't be parking lots. Yeah. And that's True. unfortunately what a lot of Pleasant that's, Street is. Yeah. 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 So, at any rate, I would be for it. <laughs> I, again, you know, I, I guess I'm, you know, I, I'm looking for, you know, something that would soften, you know, that, you I know, condition in, in, in terms of, you know, and, and you know, I, again, it, it's something that has existed for 60, 70, 80 years, you know, and, you know, it, it was acceptable. Um, and, you know, what I don't want to do is, is all of a sudden, you know, get to the point where, you know, we're ov overly sympathetic. You know, I, I am sympathetic with your plight in terms of I grew up in the city myself, and, and I know what it's like to park in the park on the street. But you know, we did park on the street whenever we had to park on the street because the, you know there was no other place to go. But you, you learned how to live with it, and and it became a part of your life. And you know, although it, it's inconvenient, it's something that's inconvenient at, at only certain times of the year. It's not necessarily inconvenient all the time. And, and you might not get a parking spot right in front of your house all the time either. So you might have to walk if 
with even if you had groceries or something like that. So, you know, I totally understand that, but it, it's one of those kind of things where, you know, we need to, you know, also, you know, get try to, you know, keep, you know, the neighborhood from becoming, you know, a, a one large parking lot too. And and I think that's my concern is that, you know, where do we stop and, and you know, okay. how do we, you know, keep things under control? And, and I completely agree with you because, you know, there is a reason why I keep all these trees and bushes in front of the house because it would be easy for me just to cut them down. You know, but I retain them. I own this property for a few years, and I retain this, you know, like uh, bushes and trees in the front of the house, in the back of the house. I, re I retain those, you know, I'm paying, you know, a lot of money to trim them, you know, the cut branches, you know, like, again, I completely agree with you. But at this point, I'm just asking, you know, it's tw uh, 19 feet wide space for a parking lot. That's How many uh, cars are we talking about? Two cars, two, two more cars. So four cars in total? Two cars, no, two cars total. Oh, four, and, 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 and four, four, two on yes, each two side. and two, yes. And I, I saw the fire department wanted bollards against the house, or, or a building department, or somebody had suggested that. Uh, are you, are you oh, aware of that? Yeah, 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 you, you're talking about the, you know, yes. Poles. Yes, yes, yes. 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 I think it was planning suggested wheel stops only because of the way he had that is that the the driveway went right up against the yep. house. So right. And normally you don't require wheel stops in a residential neighborhood. But but there well, ought to yeah, be something that would prevent somebody stops, from yeah. accidentally stepping on the gas and going through the town. <laughs> I do want to say yes, one thing. Yes, I was planning to do this. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Just yeah. one thing I want to say is yeah. having gone I down guess the there, fire department also said the same thing. So we Having were, gone by your property, it, there is a lot of mature greenery there. So I don't have a problem with him not planting a tree because there is a lot of greenery down there and, and he does have the bushes. Right. I was just curious and if anybody was use, utilizing those well, I'm parking glad, lots. I'm glad all. we had the discussion because... <laughs> Clears up some of the questions I had, really. I, uh, you ready to vote? Well, I don't know. It's, it's a I got to change it. It's a public hearing. <laughs> anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak in favor against the, this application? Last call to speak in favor against the application. Hearing none, then I'll call. I'll close public hearing 2900. I, that's up to you. I have no motion. It's whatever you want to do. Um, I'd like to move that um, whereas the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission has received an application for a second driveway, and the widening of an existing driveway located at 61 Pleasant Produce Street, Connecticut oh, Square, man. LLC, owner applicant, map 27, lot 14, R33 zone, and whereas the commission held a public hearing on May 11, 2018, and whereas the commission has determined that the second driveway and the widening of the existing driveway will not have an adverse impact on the adjacent street or adjoining properties, uh, resolved the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission hereby approves PH 2900 for the widening of the existing driveway and the application of the second driveway located at 61 Pleasant Street, Connecticut Square LLC owner applicant map 27 lot 14 R33 zone with the, with the conditions of approval listed in the May 17th uh, memo by the planning by the department planner. 24 conditions. And the 24 conditions. You Just the hearing was on the 17th, not the 11th. Yeah, it was, you corrected to the 17th. 14th. The 17th. 17th. 17th today. <laughs> the, uh, Second. And you had made a, a suggestion that something be added. Is that in here? 
one condition should be put on there, even though the applicant is agreeable to it, just so there's no problem, that the um, work will not start until the town replaces the existing catch basin. Well, they're going to redo the whole road. I know, but we, we just want to make sure it's in there just in case. And he had no problem with it. The, the only comment that I, I would have would, would be that, you know, if, you know, we're saying. Well, now, this is a discussion on the motion. Correct. Okay. Yes. Is that, you know, if we're saying that, um, you know, th there's adequate greenery right there presently and that we don't have to add anything, I would like to maybe add a, a condition where if the bushes that are there right now get removed, that they they be somehow maintained or replaced with some additional greenery that would you know reflect you know you know an an equal amount of or maintained would be yeah just maintained an equal amount of greenery there and and the, you know I guess I would support it along those lines. Oh, I guess no. It should have been in, in before because the motion has been made and seconded. This was a place for oh, a discussion. I no, I, I, that's why I, I asked <laughs> if it was discussion. Okay. Uh, well, you can, it's not proper place anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, okay, we're at the place then. If you're ready to vote, all in favor? Opposed? It's uh, carried. It's uh, six zero a uh, six one zero. Uh, if I may make a suggestion, if you get to reading a, a, a motion again, is please to save some some time in your voice or whoever's reading it. You may just want to uh, mention the fact the draft resolution is dated May 17th or whatever date it is, and uh, by the planning office, and that should cover it. Then you don't have to read every last sentence. It just would save some voices, I think. Okay. He's all set. That's all set. Does he need to stop at the planning office for anything? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have to come up to the planning office for your. Okay, tomorrow, right? Yeah. Well, let's see. <laughs> Public hearing 2907, 130. Elm Street, Secretary, please read the legal notice and uh, read, t take the roll. <coughs> the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 17th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in a town hall council chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2907, 130 Elm Street. Street special use application for the temporary retail sales of fireworks. Chris Latracia. TNT Fireworks applicant, Bricksmore, GA, freshwater owner, map 57A, lot 329, business regional zone, um, BR zone. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda Gray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Is the applicant here? Mr. Chairman, the applicant notified us today that they were not able to be here um, and um, asked whether you would consider it in their absence. Well, uh, is it the same applicant we've had other years? Uh, it's the uh, exact same application that you approved a year ago, um, same everything. And this is uh, just 130 Elm Street? That's all we're doing That's all because we're doing. we've had them also up on Hazard Avenue. Right, and there was another one that was originally for tonight, too, over in the mall, but that one didn't post their public hearing signs. Okay. So that, so, but this one here uh, did post the signs. Everything was... is, uh, there is no 
the staff supports it. Uh, it's exactly as you approved it. Uh, if we did circulate it and all of the reviewing departments, uh, you have the list, and I don't believe there are any negative comments. Okay. Uh, on. Any questions? We'll go ahead and take care of it then. Um, any of the commissioners' questions through Roger? So I might well just ask if there's anybody here to speak. speak I will. I just want to take care of the commission first. Anyone in the audience would like to speak in favor or against this application? Is there anyone would like to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none, then I will close 2907. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve Peak Planning Zoning Hearing 2907, 130 Elm Street, um, according to the draft rev resolution as prepared by the Planning and Zoning Commission D Department dated May 17, 2018. So moved. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Roger, I, I was looking for my motion. Oh, right okay, here. I'm sorry. Uh, several places through there, it mentions tents, and, and I think we should add. Right, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Jen uh, did ask the applicant to clarify that, and. Um, they just gave us a generic description uh, for Enfield. There is no tent. Um, it's all inside. So just to uh, make sure, could we add other? Right. I mean, the, we can put it in the record tonight. Is uh, that? But there is no conditions tent. Conditions is a number seven. There's not an approval for the tent. I, I don't. Anything outside? Yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah, Even a table or anything. Yeah. Right, right. It's all inside. I, I, no, out, no outside. Number yeah. seven could be no outside display. I got only three, right? Yeah. I know only three. I'm sorry. It's, it's one, two, three. It's one, two, three. I got four, five, six yeah, yeah. specific but, conditions. But, but, but it, it, there's only three of them. So um, I, I can make that as a... On the preceding on the other side. But that's still one, two, three. That's the same thing. Oh. Okay. Oh. So, so I'll make, you know, a condition for, I'll add a condition for that says that there shall be no outside displays or, you know, sales, sales you know, outside of the building itself. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. You need a second? Yeah. Second. All right. So th this is added. Anything further? Got to get Ken to agree Ken? there. Ken, Ken said, yeah, they, in fact, he added the whole thing. <laughs> no, he said he did the whole motion. But oh, okay. Case, that's all. No problem. All right. All Have you ready to vote? All in favor? Opposed? I'm sorry. Did I, did I add close? I guess I did. Yeah, I don't know where I'm at. Okay. okay. I'm just trying to get this done. I know. <laughs> okay. 29, uh, 2912. Public hearing. Is the applicant here? This is a uh, 399 Enfield Street Indoor Design Office. Applicant, okay. please come forward. And, uh, take the first, I'll have Secretary take the roll to read the legal notice. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nicola Fakus. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. And Rich Suzak is here. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 17, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2912-399 Enfield Street, special use permit application for an interior design office with interior and minor exterior site improvements located within the King Street, Enfield Street Design Overlay District. Marie Triano, applicant, Frank Triano, owner, map 33, lot 235, BL zone. 
The applicant is here, if you will, please, your name and uh, address. Marie Triano, 1156 Enfield Street in Enfield. All right, and if you would please explain to the, the commission what it is you plan to do or... Uh, I'm would... planning to move my business from Agawam to Enfield. Um, uh, I love the building. We're just going to do some minor exterior uh, changes. I think you all have the elevations. We're just going to take the existing porch and open up the walls. It's going to be open. We're going to do <coughs> one entrance. Right now it's two. Right now it's two units and we're going to combine it into one unit. Questions from the commission? This used to be, I believe, the old Enfield Press Office. Yes, for years. that's what I'm told. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, then lately it was a two accountants office. I had noticed that. It it looks lovely. You're going to do a very nice job, and Thank I'm sure you. you'll so be very building. busy. And it's, it makes me happy when people come back to town. Thank you. It does, and that building <coughs> needs attention and has for. It a needs while. a lot of attention. <laughs> We're going to put a new HVAC system in and. Replacement windows. I just have one question sure. because I was looking. Um, handicap accessible. I see you have stairs in front, which is fine, but will you have some kind of way for. There's none there now. No, there isn't. There isn't. Mm -mm. And then I saw that you were going to do the bathroom. Is that going to be ADA? Um, it will fit, a, the existing bathroom will fit a wheelchair in there. Um, the, there was a bathroom upstairs, mm -hmm. it was put in a closet. <laughs> Um, you couldn't even, <laughs> you couldn't move around in it. You could wash your hands at the same time that you're. So uh, I would imagine that wasn't to code. They also put a makeshift bathroom in the garage. Oh. Um, so that's coming out as well. Yeah, there's a, they put a bathroom in the garage. Interesting. Okay. I was just yeah. curious because if somebody had come to your office in a wheelchair I was wondering how they would get in that's uh, we would figure it out but they would be able to move around the floor we're opening doorways yeah, I saw that you had an open space yeah. but I was just concerned about <coughs> entering that's all the, bu the yeah. building department's gonna will address all that it depends on how many employees what you know the retail mm. uses and stuff like that whether they would require stuff like it's that. not a retail store it's an office I have <laughs> one employee and uh, we typically go to our clients' homes. It's so interior that's design, why she so wouldn't we wouldn't really need handicap. Right. That, <laughs> that's why the code kind of varies as to what you're doing with the so location. When in the narrative they talked about having displays of furniture that you could touch in that, so <laughs> so that was too. my concern. Is you know people will be there. People will be coming in, and they'll be. Mm -hmm. So that was that was the only concern. That was all. Any other questions for the applicant? All right, if you would, uh, anyone in the audience would like to speak in favor of this application? Anyone in the audience would like to speak in favor or against this application? Anyone, again, would like to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none, I'll close public hearing 2912. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Chair, I, I, I did look at your, your, your. Oh, I, I did look at your house, and and, and I, I just envisioned what it would look like with the black, you know, yeah, you know, shingles black. and the black things, and and I, I think it would definitely be a, a good improvement. But anyways, with that said, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we approve application 2912 399 Enfield Street in accordance with the draft resolution as prepared by the planning department dated May 17th with the 23 uh, conditions. Um, there are no site specific conditions at this point, but you know, if th there is a requirement from the building department for some kind of a handicap access, that you know, obviously you, you would have to do something along those lines. Second. Motion is made, seconded. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? None opposed, and no abstentions. Thank you Good very Good luck, much. and welcome to back to town. Or welcome to town. 
All right. Moving too fast here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Twenty-five ninety-five, right? Twenty. Twenty-eight ninety-five. Twenty-eight ninety-five. See, this is where I get screwed up. Is the apple can hear? <laughs> this is uh, thirty-four Renfield Street. Secretary, take the roll and read the legal notice. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Rich Suzak is here. And the Enfield Planning Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 17, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2895, 34 Enfield Street. Application to modify special permit for McDonald's to allow for exterior modifications. McDonald's USA LLC care of Bowler Engineering applicant, Enfield MAC LLC and Enfield M en Enfield RMR LLC. Attention Gior Gnome owner, map 35, lot 80, BL zone. Mr. Chairman, the applicant needs the applicant needs to set up his um, his PowerPoint on the laptop. So if you want to take a five minute okay. recess, okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. If you would, uh, well, okay. okay, you can yeah set up and then to, uh, take a five minute break until he sets up or to make a motion. Yeah, like to make a motion that we take a five minute recess. Second. second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Where this come from? Back those babies.
Charlie. Yeah. Well, thank you. We call a meeting back to order. The secretary, please take the roll. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lafakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. All right, if Sarah, if you will introduce yourself. Well, good, good evening. Uh, my uh, name is. You read the, you know, we haven't read the legal notice, right? No, we did. You read it before the break. Oh, well, before we took the break. All right. So I kept me up. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Jim Cranston. I'm with Bowler Engineering, representing McDonald's this evening uh, for this application. Um, before you right now is the McDonald's on Enfield Street. Uh, we are proposing um, a ver couple of site modifications, and I'll go over those briefly with you this evening. What's shown before you right now is the, the property survey of the existing conditions. Uh, I'll just go over briefly how the site is laid out. There's two access driveways, one on Enfield Street, one on Connecticut Ave. There is a drive-through feature uh, at this restaurant and there is no speaker in place. That, there was a restriction that was placed on this uh, property back in the day when it was built to not allow speakers. Uh, so there is no speaker uh, and the menu board is in the back uh, over here. And this is the, uh, the drive-through facility over here. We're here before you tonight uh, to modify the special permit uh, for site several site improvements and also some building uh, maintenance features. This is a color rendering of the, the final site as it would look after the improvements are constructed. And I'll just go over with you what, what those changes are. Really the biggest change um, for this um, these site improvements are the ADA improvements. McDonald's went around to all of their sites and they did an ADA study both in the building and outside of the building. There are some um, areas of the site that currently don't comply with regulations. There are slopes that exceed the, the maximum allowable slopes. Um, there are some access issues, some ramp issues and, and things like that. So what this plan does on the outside of the building is address all of those uh, concerns. So what we've done is we've constructed some new ADA parking over here on this side with accessible pathways uh, we can't we can't see that where, yeah. where the you dot go. doesn't come up the dot that's what doesn't I, come he, up. He, he thought it would be projected up here that's why I was pointing here yeah. I can stand up here if you'd like I can use the mouse too that's fine okay sorry about that <laughs> that would be then it would Pete, I thought it was projected <laughs> so the ADA spaces are up here okay. and then the access path the well, accessi oh, yeah. accessible walkway would be right here the walkways around the building would get uh, reconstructed. Today there are brick pavers out there, and we would put in new concrete sidewalks. And, Can and we ask a question as you go along, or sure. will it disrupt you? Um, uh, why don't I go over the site? Well, I features. picked up one thing, and since you were just talking about it, I noticed no, I'll leave that up there because that's what I'm going to refer to. Your uh, walkway from the north side of the uh, from. Uh, Enfield Street into the parking lot doesn't have the pedestrian crosswalks in there and it's so wide open over here and that's at the entrance I'm this sorry, one here right there are no and you notice the one on the south does have all the way across <coughs> the parking lot yep I can certainly address that uh, and the that, one that is on, on your drawings as well yep so the one up here, this is an existing sidewalk. Right, but you should add the, the cross hatches for the uh, pedestrian walkway. So I'll, I'll address that. Um, so what we've done, um, because of this, this existing sidewalk being located at the main entryway, we really don't want to um, encourage customers to use that, um, just kind of for liability reasons. This, if we had a crosswalk here, it's kind of a wide open area. That's I kind know, of why we. That's the entrance, and that's where they're coming in. And then and, and, uh, somebody's got to be warned that people may be coming across that sidewalk. Okay, so we we can revisit that with our client and see if they want to paint that. But what we've done is we've added a second connection. <laughs> this one on the bottom of the page is actually new. That's not existing. Right, I I, I realize that, and okay. you do have the crosswalk there painted. Exactly. But, but that's also an exit. 
So you get as much traffic going out as you do coming, well, except the ones that aren't going to use the uh, drive through Yep, it, it is an exit. Um, they're not coming in off the street. I think when people come in off the street, they're probably traveling a little bit faster. In this case, when they leave the drive through they're driving straight, and they can see if there are pedestrians, whereas <coughs> if they're turning off of Enfield Street, they're making a turn. They're not going to see people till their, their car is turned. So. It's not that much of a sharp turn, I don't think, as you have there, but... We shall see. So that that's really the main reason why we've added the second connection but to the right of way. But you have the people crossing there. But I don't know what the law requires. So as far as the ADA improvements go, there will be new ramps uh, and new access ways to the customer doors. One of the other features. So where are the customer doors that you're there? You just mentioned it. Sure. Um, so there are doors. Over here on the side, there's a vestibule over here where I'm circling okay. the cursor. And then there are doors up front, one from the patio area, and then one on the side here. Right. So you're not doing any changes to the doors? Um, there are actually architectural improvements as, as part all right, of All right. I just location. There's no, no change in location to the doors. No. All right. Nope. This is, um, this is a photo of the existing menu board. I'm showing this to you because we're actually proposing to remove this and replace it. These existing menu boards are about 50 square feet and kind of unsightly. Um, so this is what's out there today at the back of the building. And two of the new features that we're proposing here are, are digital feature menu boards. This <coughs> smaller one is shown on the site plan uh, <coughs> at the drive through area. It's about 20. Actually, I'm sorry, it's about 12 square feet in area. It's literally a, a digital display like a TV screen uh, in a cabinet. And what it does, it allows them to um, change the display from within the, the, the restaurant as opposed to come out and manually change the display. This next slide shows the new menu board. This is half the size of the current one that's out there. So it's about 22 square feet. This is actually two TV screens side by side. Um, and relative to brightness, it has the same technology as your smartphone as an auto dimming feature. So during the day, the background is, is brighter. And then at nighttime, when the lighting levels get lower, it dims down. So lighting uh, will not be a concern. This is a overlay plan just to show you the contrast between what's out there today and what's proposed. So on this plan is are the proposed improvements. Everything that is going to be built in the end of the day is black and existing features that are getting removed are red. So it just shows you the minimal changes that we're making to the site. Um, we're not changing the number <coughs> of parking spaces. Or f there's 55 spaces today. And after the project, there will also be 50, 55 spaces. So that, that's really the, a brief summary of, of the site changes. So I guess if you have questions on the site stuff, we can go over that, and then I can go over the building changes. If that works for you? If, if you go back to the, well, I don't know, the questions from the others. I was just curious, the, um, sure. the digital pre-browse board, Yes. is that someone would drive up? Yep, I can show that to you. And in then have to touch it? Nope. How does that, I'm just curious how yep. that works. Sure. Good, good question. So this is the, um, the drive through area here. Mm -hmm. This angled larger feature, this is the menu board. Just before that, so the car behind the person ordering would be sitting facing this pre-browse board. It'll just show a couple features or options okay. for them before they actually order. It's just a, it's basically a, a little display. Okay, it's just like a screen yep. and it's not something that someone manipulates by. No, okay. no. Can Thank I just say something? Still image. It, it's kind of like what their specials are. Yeah. That time. The way like when you said smartphone having, technology, I was like, oh, is someone going to like have to brightness. reach out through their window? It's I don't like know. No. coffees are 99 cents and no. so, you know, things like that. It makes it easier for them to change it through with the different meals as opposed to coming out and manually changing it. Charlie. Okay. Will this new board have a speaker in it? It will not. Um, McDonald's wanted to propose that. Uh, we met with Roger, and he um, 
he advised us that we should not go down that road because we would not be successful. So we have taken that off the plan. Thank you. No one else? Let me go back to that first, uh, first one. <coughs> Let me... Sheet C3, and I don't know if you have it, shows a patio fence to be removed. Uh, there's a total fence, ar a fence around that patio. Yes. <clears throat> then sheet four says reset uh, uh, the gator, uh, I'm sorry, the gate and the rail on the west corner. Yes. So. And then C5, the handicaps are, are near, near the patio uh, um, with, oh, let's see, that's uh, C5. Because no, <laughs> I'm writing them. To remain. Okay. The patio. And then on C C five or C, right. yeah. get there. C you got this. Yeah. So you got the big cutout. Why first of all, why is a cutout? Sure, I can I can address that. Um, as part of the ADA survey, they surveyed the slopes of the patio area and there's outdoor seating. So in order to meet code, the surfaces can't exceed two percent. That small area, there are some exceedances that are more than 2%. So we're taking a small portion out and reconstructing it to comply. Would you repeat that? I, 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 I sure. Um, for, for outdoor seating, if right. it's going to be accessible for um, handicapped patrons, there are slope requirements. And the survey identified that that portion exceeds the slope requirements. So we're addressing that and, and making it comply. By removing and but the handicap where are they coming in from that's what I, I wanted to ask so there's a there's a gate on the side there's an existing gate on that side of the building right there's also a door at the front of the building that enters the patio so there's two different access points there's a there's a way yeah but on the inside you <coughs> if you come out from the inside of the uh, out on the uh, from the inside of the restaurant how do you get into that square area if you wanted to? So, all right, so that square area is just the, the limit of the saw cut. Oh. End of day, there's not going to be a boundary there. It's just a line demarking where the saw cut will be and where the repair area is. So that is not a fence. Okay, so this 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 is not, this line goes away. This line goes away. Yes. Oh, well, all right, I, I didn't see that. Well, then, on, on, uh, let me go further. A1, sheet A1, shows no change in the patio. So sheet A1 is the architectural floor plan. Um, our, our scope as a civil engineer is for everything outside of the building, so our, our plans cover the changes to the patio. The architectural plans are related to the, the building itself. No, I know. All right. They're just. I know, but the why? Why again? This line wasn't. This this line had disappeared, and on the other one, it had a line. So you didn't have the. Okay. You didn't have the square. All right. The, the, the chairman's point is the architecturals and the site plan. They got to match up. Um, so either either they change their architecturals, or you change your site plan. But they they so got to be internally consistent. So these are, you know, these are going to end up hopefully going to construction drawings. We don't typically show changes for the site for the building contractor on the architectural plans and vice versa. So to show a site well, change, usually, uh, I mean, we, we can it. add it. We can add it. It's just we'd have to then clarify who's doing what work. It's not a big deal. Uh, okay. And I think it's C1, too, is this, uh, I got a problem with this. Okay. Yeah. okay. C2? No. Hold on. Oh. C2 is just the removal. C, yeah, I'm sorry. C3? No, no, number, after C7, I think it was. 
there were no numbers on the, the plans. I don't know what they were. Uh, two seven. What's next? Then we just have uh, overviews. Yeah, they're just uh, Connecticut overviews. All right. And then so there's nothing to refer to them no, as. And then there was a. Yeah. And I find it difficult, and I, I was looking around, when I'm doing, and I don't know if anybody else has a problem, I happen to know this restaurant, but I don't know why people are adverse to using the north, east, south, and west arrows on, on their drawings, but if, if it was a building I wouldn't be familiar with, it's sort of hard to orient them so that you understand what they're doing. Well, at least the north arrow, because you can figure the other three out. Well, yeah, <laughs> at least the north arrow would help. <laughs> on which plan? I, I, all of them. I don't think you have them on They're in the other. upper left-hand corner. Yeah, you got to fold the pages all the way back, Charlie, and you'll see it. Oh, are they stapled together? <laughs> no, it's, it's close. But they're, they're right here. Oh, well, oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's what I said. <laughs> all right. They're there. They're there. Yeah. So okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. So, right. You can right. miss it. It's easy. I, well, that's the way I was looking at the maps. I guess it would help if you're on the outside <laughs> page. All right. Thank you. Uh, the commission has seen uh, those are for the roof. Would you like me to the go color over? The color pa panel that you passed around, there were two, two items on it. Will you, which goes where? Sure, so I'll start with the architectural features next. Um, so there are two handouts he gave you, one's for one of the sites. All right, so that's the sample board. Uh, that, that is the proposed architectural shingle. Uh, I'll go over the building changes right now. So what I have on the screen is the existing building. It's a split face block with a shingled roof and there are white light bars on the roof. This is just another view of the front of the restaurant. Uh, again, the white light bars and then the McDonald's sign on the roof. So as, as part of the architectural um, changes, they'd like to re-shingle the roof and as part of that, they would like to remove the white light bars from the roof. We would also put up a new McDonald's sign. It would be identical to what's up there except it would be an internally lit LED sign, so it would just be more energy efficient. The sign would be identical. I do have um, color elevations. That's the handout that was provided. Uh, this was something that um, the planning office asked that we prepare. They reached out to us yesterday, said this is something that you'd be interested in seeing. So we had the architect pull this together today. Um, this generally shows how the building would look with the removal of the, the white bars and then the new McDonald's sign out, out front. It's part of the internal building changes. They also do an internal ADA yeah. survey. They did find nonconformities with their restrooms and other features uh, in and around the building. So the building permit that we submit is going to show the internal changes to address that. There's also going to be new finishes, new tile, new, 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 you know, new ceilings, new finishes, just to freshen up the inside of the, the restaurant. That'd be nice. Generally, I'd like you to go over the floor plan and then changes you're making. You do have floor plans in your package. So we, we did submit a floor plan. Um, I do not. I, I can pull it up if you want. I have it. Okay. Any questions on the exterior? No. You, I have one. In terms of you mentioned the fact that the, the existing exterior skin is a, a split face block. Are, are you going to be enhancing that, you know, the, the, the masonry, you know, it, cleaning it or you know, painting it or, or doing something because normally split face eventually starts absorbing, you know, atmospheric things and it starts getting gray and dingy and things like that. And sure. Um, they actually will be uh, cleaning the exterior. I'll note that the elevations call for painting it to match existing color, but with the type of block, you just don't paint that type of block. So what we will be doing is the entire exterior will be, will be cleaned and pressure washed. And you can make that a condition if you'd like, but we will be doing that. Okay. Because did you ever, do you like add, you know, a sealer so that it doesn't start absorbing moisture, when, especially if you're going to be pressure washing it and maybe, you know, removing some of the resilience of, you know, some of the original, 
impervious materials that might have, you know, kept it water tight and, and all of a sudden it becomes more absorbent to moisture and things like that? I'm not sure what, what they would use. It, it's possible, but I'm not sure as the, the means and methods. That would be included in the building permit application. Right, yeah, and, and again, it, it's just something that you, you might consider if you're going to be doing that. Sure. So just to, for the information of the commission, is the, the a McDonald's or the Mr. Cranston on behalf of McDonald's originally submitted a, a redo of the entire outside of the building, but it was not consistent with your design, your infill design standards or what you would um, require. The overlay district. Right, and so what, they're, what they scaled it back to was to uh, re-shingle the roof um, and um, keep the mansard roof. Originally, the mansard roof was coming off and, uh, and put the McDonald's up there. So um, it, it, it was sort of, so I understand the commissioner's question about, you know, the CMU on the side and everything, but there were plans to, like, completely overhaul the architecture, but it wouldn't look like, New England and it wouldn't look like your design plans. Uh, question on <clears throat> still exterior. You have exterior signs, uh, McDonald signs, and uh, exits and entrance signs. Uh, some were vandalized. Are they going to be replaced or on the building repaired? No, they're they're at the entrances of the uh, was it Connecticut Avenue. So. Um, Right now, the plans call for maintaining those signs. Um, the one I think is it's gone. We can certainly or broken off. We, we can I, look into replacing those if if they're allowed by right. Well, I, I thought I, we looked at zoning and there were some restrictions, so we weren't going to touch those. But if that's a concern, we can certainly look into that. I I was just wondering what you were doing with them. I didn't see them on the on the maps or anything. I think I think. I, I, I don't know about the ones. You don't notice them much anymore. I noticed when they were damaged. So we can check. I believe Roger's involved with the sign permitting process. Yes. So we can review that with him, okay. see if that's an option. I just, what you're going to do. All right. Interior, I guess. Um, so this is a floor plan that shows the final layout. It doesn't really compare and contrast existing and, and proposed. But in looking at this plan, this area here is the restroom area. This area is getting reconfigured uh, to provide proper clearances, adjustments of uh, handles within the, the restroom area. Um, that's generally what, what they're doing in there. So I'm not sure what, what level of, of detail you're looking at inside the building. Um, but again, we would submit for a building permit and the full details of exactly what's happening, finishes, um, any wiring changes, things like that, that would be included. The layout itself, though, the, the seating area, the, the area dedicated to seating is not changing, um, meaning it's not growing. There will be a new seating configuration um, within, within the restaurant as well. Questions on interior? No. I just have one. <laughs> I have one. Just sure. one. Uh, are you going to put a kiosk, uh, an ordering kiosk somewhere? Because I know that's kind of what all the restaurants are doing, so that you can, as you're standing there waiting, you can place your order, and when you get to the counter, is that in this? Are yes. you going to be planning that? Yep, that's a great question. If you look at the last sheet, sheet 1A, that has the seating layout plan. That probably shows. Um, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so those are basically touch screens like you were asking before. When you're inside, it gives the customer the option of going directly to a display and, and placing their order and paying for it. The associates will even walk up and help people, you know, educate them how to, how to use them. Is, and I'm just looking at this, and I'm a little confused where you're talking about those kiosks are going to be placed. Sure. Um, one second. 
This is seating, I think. Okay, this is a bar. This is a service. Yeah, I, think, I don't know. I know. It's, if I could find the door. So, the front counter mm -hmm. is, is right here. The kiosk is, should be right behind there, right here. Uh, okay. It faces two sides. So this would be the kiosk, and then someone could go on this side, and someone could go on this side. All right, thank you. And then they would also roll out the, um, the dining option where people make their order, and they sit down, and they're assigned a table number, and then they're served. That's, that's part of the change with this program. Thank you. Sure. Are any of those tables that you have, or do you know, that can be moved together, or are they all on stanchions and cemented into the floor? I know you have groups of people come in and they like to congregate with each other. Um, I'm not sure how they're, if they're fastened to the ground or not, um, but those finishes would typically be part of the, um, the filing for the building permit as well. Yeah. Okay, well, that's different, I guess, over there. And then, again, ADA okay. compliance, accessible areas, those are defined as well. You're quiet over there today. <laughs> no. <laughs> Too much candy? Sugar color. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ooh. Uh, anyone in the audience would like to speak in favor against this application? Anyone in the audience would like to speak in favor against the application? I see one back there in the dark. Please come forward, sir, if you would move your chair. And, right, you have the opportunity to answer him if you would desire. Oh, let him have the desk, please. Uh, just gotta get up. Thank you. My name is Jeffrey Scott. I live at 17 Connecticut Avenue. I'm a neighbor of this McDonald's, and uh, I'm actually very happy to hear how planning has been handling this. Uh, they've taken into consideration previous applications for special use permits, and that's a good thing. Uh, is there only going to be one internal kiosk? You just got to ask a question and then the commission will try to get it. He'll answer that when he gets a chance. Because I've been to several of their restaurants that they do have a couple, and they're at the back of the ordering area. And I, certainly associates do come and offer to help you place your order. Uh, and Are then, you talking exterior or interior? No, no, right inside where you walk in to order. In other words, usually where you would order and then step back to wait for your order. Right. And that's where I've seen the kiosks. And uh, That's where you pointed out, I believe. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great idea. I, I do get what you're saying about the crosswalk, though. If you're going to have a sidewalk coming into a parking lot, there should be indication on that pavement there's a crosswalk, and or if you have to sign it to say, be, be careful of pedestrians, then that's what you do. But Right, a sign either for the traffic coming in or for or, the pedestrian. Or take that sidewalk out. Well. Um, I've been through that, that drive-through many times, uh, some recently. I've noticed that there are holes where they've hung uh, either collection boxes or signage in the wall of the building and they were the kind where you put a plastic insert in and then the screw goes into there the plastic inserts just it's very unsightly so I'm uh, hoping that in the course of re redoing the outside those get addressed so that looks right um, do we have a color for the roof Yes, sir. This is what was shown. Black. Okay. Because I know in the past they wanted to make it red because it attracts customers. And <laughs> I didn't really want that down the end of the street. Me personally, anyway. Um, and I'm a fan of the light bars going. I think that's not a particularly attractive architectural feature. Again, it's meant to draw people, I think, and there's not a whole lot of competition up there. And uh, 
I do applaud McDonald's for addressing the ADA issues there. Obviously, they're, they're being a responsible corporate citizen. And I will say that the current owner operator of that restaurant is a great neighbor. He's done a very nice job there. Other than every now and then one of his contractors forgets to shovel the sidewalk, but that gets addressed. So I, I'm, I'm in favor of this and, and, and glad to see that they're, they're doing it the way the commission has asked to have it done in the past. And obviously they're, they're just trying to do the right thing for everybody. That's what Thank I got. you as a citizen for coming out and expressing yourself. You know if it's McDonald's, I'll be here, Charlie, if I can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Anyone further would like to speak in favor or against? Last call to speak in favor or against. Do you want to answer about the kiosk, whether there's only going to be one or two? Sure. So the um, that red area that I had highlighted behind the ordering area, the, the, the counter, that would be the, where the kiosk is. And there is one, but it's two-sided. So there'd be a, an order point on this side and an order point on this side. Oh, so two people it would serve two customers. Okay. okay. Anyone else would like to speak in favor or against? Last call to speak in favor or against? Because were you going to address that, that crosswalk with the, from the, the north side walk area as to, you know, whether that's going to be, you know. You could have them work that out with Roger if you want to do that because he may not be able to do that. And we can leave that to Roger. I, well, would, I, would, I would suggest if you, if you want it, you put it in your conditions of approval because other than that, even with a crosswalk, somebody should have a sign. Uh, to me, a sign mm. is either watch for cars or watch for pedestrians. Well, well, the walk. only thing that happens is if you have a crosswalk, then then the cars are obligated to sort of stop for pedestrians in a crosswalk. And, well, in they are, of, yeah. Right. If, but it's if, already in a parking lot. Of. <laughs> the whole thing's a parking lot, so cars generally know when they're driving there that there's people walking around. I get, I get that it's different. Well, there are. that They walk all over the place. But this is a, uh, if you come off a sidewalk, you expect it to be. It's a side oh, the sidewalk, sidewalk one. Okay. My sorry. thought I was, was instead of having that uh, diagonal thing coming in, if, if you could put up that, put up that, where that crosswalk is, all you have to do is, instead of having that crosswalk come diagonally and then walk everybody across the parking lot, why don't you just put a little bit of a jog in that crosswalk and stripe right over to the entrance. What do you... See, so see where you have a walkway there? Where? So you this just... One? And have it, you got it coming in, well just turn it and then put a... stripe it right across to the, uh, to the entrance to the building rather than making people walk through the parking lot. Well, that's where I would have expected to, but you're, you're saying, still going Are you saying this come this way? Yeah, what I'm saying is just take this thing here and I put can't the see. sidewalk down here and stripe it right across to the sidewalk. Then there's no... But then that's closer to the cars still, coming in. You still it's get closer to the cars coming in. I would do the same thing, but run across the back of the spots to the two existing crosswalks from the ADA. Oh, yeah. Then it gets them farther away from the entrance, and it doesn't look like an access as soon as you leave so, the building. Because I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to avoid people from using that because that is the main entrance. Somebody comes in, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning after a night drinking, <coughs> yeah. and there's a crosswalk there where if they deter people by not having it there, and if they were to direct it across the back of those spots to there, the people... I think they're being more safer. So I agree with that. I can see both ideas. What I'd like to do is work something with Roger. And the reason I say that, to, to stripe behind those spaces, there, there's actually an ADA consultant that specifically scrutinizes our plan. And they've always uh, frowned upon us striping a walkway behind the spaces just for liability purposes. You're now funneling people directly behind there. I know people walk there anyways if it's not defined. But now when you're funneling people directly behind those spaces, well, I think it's... Well, you go in there and they're walking usually out of, the, out of that uh, double doors and they go to the parking, which is across the parking, across the uh, drive through lanes anyway. So the, they, they're they out do. there. 
try to keep them in so one if, place. If we can agree to work with Roger and, and staff to come up with a uh, an agreeable solution amongst both could, parties, I think. With, uh, I don't know, the traffic safety officer any help or whoever. We could leave it to you, Roger. It's, I guess. If that's right. I mean, I'll work on it, and if I can, I can bring it. I can bring yeah. it back and show it to the commission at some point. Or maybe a sign would handle it. If, uh, if we did add a caution, a, pedestrians or something. I don't know. I will tell you if we do, if we are allowed to add that crosswalk, we would add signage, pedestrian crossing with the person and the arrow pointing down. Yeah. That that we would definitely add. It just I like, helps, on the, helps uh, identify highways it. now. They got the diamonds before the crosswalks. I, I which is what a warning reason. I, I something new I've seen in the highways. But all right, we could put that as a condition and to uh, have them work with Roger and his safety officer. Right, but they don't have to come back. No, 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 no. Because that's holding up construction and right. it's you get short time enough anyway. Okay, I, since we've been doing more talking, I'll open it again. Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application? Last call to speak in favor or against the application. Then I shall call, call, call close public hearing 2895. Chair, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve, you know, plant carrying 2895-34 Infield Street according to the, the draft resolution as prepared by the infield planning and zoning um, planner dated May 17th with the 32 original conditions adding an additional condition number 14A under site specific that the crosswalk be addressed at the north side sidewalk entrance into the building property. Second. Motions made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing that all in favor? Opposed? Any abstentions? Unanimous. Okay. Are you going to represent the next group too? Okay. Then the secretary, please take the roll and read the legal notice. Republic hearing 2896. Okay. This is uh, Skidico <coughs> and it's the red, the red store. At the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 17, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2896, 585 Hazard Avenue, application to modify the special permit for McDonald's to allow for exterior modifications. McDonald's USA LLC, care of Bowler Engineering applicant, P&D Realty, Co-owner with NAI Plotnik, oh, care of NAI Plotnik owner. Map 110, Lot 12, BL Zone. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Again, just for the record, because uh, it's a new hearing, is uh, identify yourself sure. again, please. Um, Jim Cranston with Bowler Ring representing McDonald's this evening. Uh, we are here before you for the McDonald's on Hazard Avenue, which is located in the Skidigo Plaza. Now, the scope of work on this project is nearly identical to the prior application. I will walk you through briefly what's out there today and what we're proposing. Um, this restaurant also has obviously an existing drive through except in this case there are no speaker restrictions. The drive through area circles around the back of the building and the menu board is right back here. Similar to the other um, project, we also need a special permit modification uh, for the changes that I'm going to walk through. So this is a, um, again, a, this is a colored rendering showing uh, the site after the improvements are completed. There are 
numerous deficiencies for ADA on this property as well. In fact, all of the exterior sidewalks are getting replaced with new ramps constructed. Uh, the ADA parking will be in a similar location as to where they are today, but they will now be striped to be compliant and then the slopes will also be compliant. On this site, the menu board is in the back of the building, similar to where it is today. It, it has moved back slightly. And then the pre-browse, the smaller menu board is right here on the corner of the building. This is a, a site photo of this restaurant menu board. Again, it's over 50 square feet in area. Uh, so this also would get removed and replaced with the, the digital menu board. Same exact product. This is the pre-browse. And then this is the uh, double display menu board, which is about 22 square feet. Um, there is another feature because there is a speaker allowed here. Um, on the detail sheet, there's a, an overhead canopy, which has a speaker integrated into it. So the canopy will protect, protect customers from the elements while they're ordering. And then the speaker is just integrated into the uh, column for the overhead canopy. This is a similar uh, overlay plan showing existing site features get a, getting removed and demoed in red and new features, final features in black. We are um, slightly changing the alignment of how this drive-through entrance is laid out and we're actually increasing the amount of green space over here. So we're adding, uh, removing some pavement and, and realigning it. But then back here, we're actually sliding the parking down to accommodate the new ADA layout. So it's, it's really a wash when it comes to um, the green area on the site. And again, as you can see, all of the changes are happening in and around the building, nothing on the exterior. And this site does not have a sidewalk in the right of way, so we are not proposing a, a connection for customers. Those are the site changes in a nutshell. So if there are any questions on the site features. On the lower right-hand corner, or left-hand corner. Yes. I lost the picture. <laughs> oh, you want me to go up one? You have a door there. No. Oh. Right the front door. Nope. You want a picture of the building. Where you were before. You want the color one? Yes, that one right there. This one. There's three parking spaces, I think, to the left of it. Right here, yeah. Right. Is that door coming out? I don't see it in the picture here. <clears throat> so there's a door on the drive through side, and right, right here, Right. there is a door still. Yes. That's right here. That's this one. That's this door. That oh, door okay. would serve customers that park in the parking <coughs> spaces on the left of the building, and then also if there's a delayed order, <coughs> customers park over here in these dedicated spaces and then the store um, employee will walk out that door to, to give them their meal if it is delayed. Well, I just park there and go in now. I don't you can do that too. Through, but, yep. You know, I just wonder if you're going to still have it there. Yes. We are not removing any doors. <laughs> to run over right away. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm in the drive. Will they be making any improvements to the entrance way? I, it's kind of a weird layout, but you're driving through the parking lot around your property to get into it. And that roadway is just all torn up, the potholes and stuff like that. I, and it's not on McDonald's property or leased property, but it is, you have to access that to get to your property. Um, like even going to the car wash next door to you, and there's some holes in there that... In that whole parking lot. Oh, yeah, right. that That's parking good. lot is atrocious, and um, it looks like McDonald's leases the property, and I'm not going to tie anything up, but it's something that really McDonald's should address with the owner of that property and yeah, have this, that fixed. Yeah, this is, in fact, a lease that's shown right on, on the plan. Um, yeah. I'm not aware of, of those concerns. It hasn't really been brought, yeah, to, it's, it, it's, brought to our attention. It's a job to get in there from let's say taylor road if you come in off of those that one and you come in uh, 
it's like a minefield, really. Actually, that's a planning and zoning violation, by the way. <laughs> well, it probably is, but it, the parking lot is... Yeah, you have a section in your regulations, actually, that the um, um, sites must must be maintained in good order. I looked that up after the last meeting uh, when it came up with respect to another applicant. Um, and um, it's, right in your, it's right in your site plan performance standards that says that you know, parking parking lots must be maintained in good order. Well, maybe we send a notice to the owner. I mean, it really has nothing to do with the applicant, but yeah. I think it would benefit the applicant. I'm not saying it's McDonald's. Yeah. Landlords, but right. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll, they'll probably want to keep McDonald's happy. Now that it's being put out there, the owner might be a little more, um, well, you know, not necessarily. Well, well, this, well, I, I think it looks pretty well occupied but the you'd think somebody does. would say yeah but that something. parking lot is okay well speak to our anything on the uh, McDonald's <laughs> other than the parking lot no. we could go all night on the parking lot okay I'll open it to the public uh, can I go I, over the building the roof the, the building the changes wants to do no. the building Colors. let him do the building Charlie I'm sorry. You should do the building. Just describe the building. Oh. Do you like the building right. features? I'm sorry. Sure. Um, so this this building has <laughs> much different architecture than the one on Enfield Street. Um, it's actually pretty unique. I haven't seen a McDonald's like this. Um, so this is just a they side. Don't, you don't have the potholes on that driveway. What's that? You don't have the potholes in the driveway. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's only from May of last year. <laughs> Um, so this building is also split face block. It has a red color to it. Um, they have these unique blue tile bands throughout and then these um, mansard roofs as well um, with the white light bars. Um, front view of the restaurant, again, the white light bars and then a single McDonald's sign on the roof. The scope for this exterior is similar to the other one in that they would like to remove the light bars. Um, Reshingle the roof th with the exact same product, with the architectural shingle, and then put up a new McDonald's sign, similar to this one, except it would be internally lit with LED lighting for uh, energy efficiency. Are you going to reshingle this one brown rather than the black like the other one? No. no um, I, you know what? I, I had a feeling someone was going to pick up on it, and when I first received it from the architect today, that was my same question. Um, they are, they will be the same product. Um, for some reason, it didn't come out the same on this rendering. But if you look at the elevations that were submitted, the actual product of the shingle is listed on the elevation that we filed. So that is what will, will be installed. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I, I have one. In, in terms of on your demolition plan, you show that the canopy, I guess, at the um, rear elevation or the side canopy off the rear ele elevation is being removed if you look at where, it where are we looking d2.2 but but then but you, you never replace it hmm let me take a look at the photo See what's out there. It, 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 it's out there in a photo too. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Okay, I wasn't aware of that change. Um, so there is a looks like it's a just an overhang. Correct. That, that they're removing. I'm not sure why they're removing that. Well, um, keeps the people driving and getting their order right there. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they'll. Um, I don't know if they have two windows here or three, but sometimes they'll change operationally how they. Let's see. So you know what? There are three. I think there's. There used to be a window there. If you look on the elevation below it, there's a blank out in the wall. So that canopy is not really serving a function on D2.2. So they're removing it. Because when you look at the elevation, it shows a canopy there. Unless it's further down the line somewhere. So. 
I have the elevation up. Oh, shoot. Um, so the one you're referring to is over here. Um, in looking at this, it looks like it's over here. All right, so it, it would actually be down here. It's at the far end. You notice on the black and white, there's a step down in the roof. Because what sheet are you looking at? <laughs> sure. So D2.2. There's a step down in the roof. This is the rear cooler area, the rear freezer. Oh. So at the far end, if you look at the elevation, it's actually no longer on the color elevation. That canopy is, is eliminated. Oh, okay. All right. So, so there's, there's, right now there's two canopies, and you're going to be eliminating one of the two. One of the two that doesn't have the mansard roof, correct. The other, the other one is a mansard canopy, but yes. One has a shingle over it, the one where you pick up your food. The pay window does not have a mansard shingle over it. It's just a straight cantilever canopy that would stay. So, so if I'm looking at your, your elevation one on D2.2, the, the left-hand canopy is going to be removed, and then there's a right-hand canopy over the, 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 the collection. I've, I've never gone to this McDonald's, so I have no clue what it, if that's a collection window or a buy window, but, but there's two canopies. So they're removing one and keeping one. So technically, I guess there's, well, there's two canopies, and then the third one is a canopy slash roof, I guess you'd call it, right? All right, yeah, so, so, so you are removing one and keeping one. The one at the far rear, which currently doesn't serve a function, is going to be removed. And I, I wasn't even aware of that change, but that's what, that looks like that's what they're doing, because there is no longer a window at the rear. Anyone else? You want to do interior? If, if you'd like me to, I can pull up that seating plan. Thank you, Sir Charles. Hold on. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be fired. Huh? Yeah. Which way they're turning? Yeah, I know. These are tough to handle. So um, this seating plan just shows the, the non-kitchen portion of the building. Um, much different layout than the, than the other one. A lot of bench tables over here. Um, the kiosk area is this red area. Again, it's behind the main counter. This is the main counter. Um, so again, it's a single double-sided kiosk, so two customers would be able to access that. Outside of the building. Um, there were tables out there too. I'm not aware of there being a play place. There might be a small, right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would that would that would remain. They're not proposing seating in that area, but it's not a full blown play no, it place. Used to be. No. Any questions on the interior? No. Uh, ready for the public then? Okay. Anything further and I'll open it to the public. <coughs> Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Anyone in the public would speak in favor or against this application? Last call to speak in favor or against the application. I'll close public hearing 2896. Chair will entertain a motion to do whatever you want. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve 2896 585 Hazard Avenue with the draft resolution as prepared by the Enfield Planning and Zoning Department dated May 17th with the 30 um, conditions listed. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, if you're ready to vote, all in favor? Any opposed? No abstentions? Unanimous. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Being well prepared, we didn't have a problem. <laughs>
Okay. This is where it gets a little Public more hearing twenty nine oh four. Uh one thirty Elm Street. An era. Mr. Chairman, while they're setting up, I did uh, provide the commission with some materials that you didn't receive previously. Um, on your uh, tables tonight, you received the um, the two-page uh, what what the uh, what the restaurant's going to look like in in color, and the color chart on the back. So, what you didn't receive in your Packets was a letter dated March 20th uh, concerning uh, trip generation. Um, it's a four, four a three-page uh, letter from uh, Jason Adams, PE, and uh, also the questions came up about what the approved plan was for Costco. So I provided you the 2003 site traffic circulation and parking lot plan for Costco that was approved in 2003. And then finally, uh, there is the draft resolution um, for, the con for the commission's consideration. Okay. Uh, so okay. the building okay. is, okay, yes, I'm sorry, legal. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 17, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2904, 130 Elm Street, special use permit for a Panera Bread Cheers. restaurant in a BR zone, Bricksmore, GA, Freshwater, State Line, LLC, owner applicant, map 657, lot, 329 BR zone. No, Charles Duran. Break them and bring them up. Yes, I'm sorry. He's here. <laughs> Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Groover. Here. And Rich Suzak's here. I just didn't want you all standing there. Just oh, no, no, we're fine. At the we're desk, fine. And all you have to do is use the microphones. All right. Okay. Uh, if you would please uh, identify yourselves for the record. Evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is John Nuff. I'm an attorney with an office at 147 Broad Street in Milford, Connecticut. And I'm here tonight on behalf of Bricksmore, GA, Freshwater, State Line, LLC, which is the owner of Freshwater State Line Plaza, which is located at 130 Elm Street. Uh, the property consists of just under 44 acres, is located in a BR zone, and is currently improved with Home Depot, Costco, Joanne Fabrics, and TGI Fridays, as well as some other retailers. This is a special permit and site plan application to add a 4,480 square foot Panera restaurant with outdoor dining and a drive through on a separate pad just north of the main drive aisle. As you know, Panera is located across the street at Enfield Square. That lease is expiring, and Panera would very much like to maintain this presence in Enfield with a brand new building, with a drive through to help it remain competitive, and to retain its 60 loyal employees. As far as zoning applications go, this one is extremely straightforward, and certainly the town has lots of experience with restaurants with drive throughs on pad sites. Roger has been very generous with his time and his thoughts, and the layout of the building, the drive through and the landscaping have benefited from his input. In fact, his memo from May 12th, and I think in um, probably the resolution, indicates that uh, there's a consensus on the building elevations, the location of the patio, area circulation, and the location of, of the drive through So we, again, want to extend our appreciation to Roger for his thoughts. The center currently complies with all of your bulk standards and will continue to comply with all of your bulk standards with the addition of the Panera, including the parking requirements. Um, I know that in some of the memos there was some discussion regarding uh, parking requirements. I just want to take you through a quick history of the site. If you could, please. I, I really wanted the identification. I mean, uh, I guess now you're into it, but I'll have to let you go. But. I had asked for the three people there for, for the names oh, and sure, addresses. Sure, I, I mean, um, uh, if I can just get through this, and then I'll, I'll, I'll identify everyone who's going to be speaking. Is that okay? Uh, well, okay. I okay. just. So, so with regard to parking, in July of 1998, the ZBA granted a variance to park the entire center 
at a ratio of 3.45 per thousand. And that was before Costco was located at the site. Then can in April 1999. Sorry, can you repeat that number again, please? Sure. In, in July of 1998, the variance was granted to park the entire center at a ratio of 3.45 spaces per thousand square feet of retail. And that was before Costco. Thank you. And then in April 1999, TGI Fridays was approved, and that was also parked at a ratio of 3.45 per thousand. In May of 2003, <coughs> A variance was granted to park Costco at a ratio of 4.6 per thousand, and at the same time, they granted a variance for impervious coverage to 70 percent. Uh, in July of 2003, uh, Costco received the approval from the Inland the Wetland Commission regarding the current configuration of the parking field and all the grassed parking areas. Later that same month, in July of 2003, the approval by this commission for Costco including the existing drive aisle, the parking lot layout, and the grass um, parking spaces, and the current parking configuration. And regardless of how you calculate parking, whether you utilize today's numbers, the numbers historically, <coughs> or some sort of combination, we will comply with your parking requirements. We comply now, and we will, we will continue to comply upon uh, the construction of Panera. And we, and we can go through the parking table a little bit further. But with me tonight are uh, several people who are going to be presenting with you. One is Tom Holly, who's the um, owner of this Panera. Um, he's located across the street, and uh, he wants to ex you know, express his uh, extreme desire to continue to operate here in Enfield. Uh, Jim Bernardino, who's a professional engineer with Boulder Engineering. We have Jason Adams, who is a professional engineer with McMahon Associates, who will be discussing traffic. And we have David Babnig, who is a licensed architect with NOR Architects. So first is going to be Tom Holly. Yep. So, um I just want to thank you very much for um, giving, giving us this time. Um, I, um, I am one of the owners of uh, Holly Bread Group. Uh, I have a couple partners. Um, and uh, we've been in business for, we started our company 18 years ago. Uh, we had no restaurants then, but uh, we now have 28. Um, and they are located in Connecticut, Rhode Island, and a little bit of southeast Massachusetts. And I thought it might be helpful, I hope it is, if I just spoke very briefly, just give you a little context of who we are and why this is so important to us. Um, so um, as I said, we, our company has been around for uh, 18 years, uh, but we've been in Enfield for the last 15 years. Um, and we have really appreciated that. I don't know how often uh, people from the town get thanked for the privilege of doing business in communities, but um, it has been very important to us to be um, able to um, serve customers in Enfield. Um, and it's been, um, it, it's something that we want to be able to continue to do. Um, as uh, was mentioned, our lease is expiring. Uh, where we currently are. This, this project, the one that you're considering, is very, very important to us to be able to stay here. Um, and so um, in that regard, you know, you might ask, well, why aren't we staying where we are? Why are, why are we willing to spend all this money to uh, create a new cafe when basically we could stay put? Um, but as I think all of us know, um, uh, it's very important that business continue to innovate and to meet up with their customers where they're going. Um, and our customers today want something very different than when we uh, first opened our Enfield Cafe. Um, the building at the Freshwater Plaza is going to allow us to provide them what they are now looking for. Um, and our present location at the mall just simply doesn't do that any longer. So um, what we want to do is we want to once again invest in a way that we can um, present to our customers the very latest designs that Panera have. They're very attractive. This is something that's really important to us. We take a lot of pride in our cafes. Um, and I think that with Roger's help and, and uh, we've gone through, um, as he might uh, tell you, many iterations on our plan in terms of the, how the building was positioned what it looks like, how it's uh, going to uh, interact with the street. And I really do believe that for all of that, um, we've come up with something that I think, I know we will be proud of, and I think it will um, add to the streetscape uh, there. Um, and it's going to be a design that's um, you know, going to focus, be able to, for us to focus on the core essence of our brand, which is really our bakery. We bake fresh every day. Uh, and to provide an environment which our customers can be really comfortable again staying there. 
and I think that over the years we've lost a little bit of that at our present location, so I'm very excited about being able to do that once again. Um, in terms of what the new cafe will allow us to do, and I mentioned how uh, customers uh, change their attitudes about what they want, what they expect. Our business has just been completely changed, really in the last five years, let alone the last 15. And um, right now, uh, you know, a few years ago, I would have said that there will never be a Panera with a drive-thru. Um, I, I didn't see how that was going to work. Well, in fact, it does work. Um, and today, we will not build a new cafe unless it has a drive-thru. So that's just how much these things have changed and how much our customers expect that of us. If you're in our cafe, you have no idea that there's a drive-thru there, but it is a convenience that many people now expect. Um, mobile ordering is something that wasn't available when we opened our Enfield Cafe. Uh, Panera has a pretty robust mobile ordering system. In, in effect, what we've done is we've given cash registers to anybody who wants one. If you have a smartphone, you can place your order on that phone. Um, the order can be ready for you when you walk in the cafe. Um, and whereas a few years ago that didn't exist, today over 30% of our business is now coming through in that kind of way. And we need to have a cafe that in terms of production and the way in which it operates can support it. And our current cafe doesn't really do that for us any longer. Um, the, the McDonald's presentations that were here uh, before, um, the gentleman from uh, Enfield who got up and spoke was asking, I think, about the um, kiosk. Um, and I'd like to encourage him to come to uh, Panera Bread when, uh, when you approve this project because we're not going to have one kiosk, we'll have multiple kiosks there. They've become increasingly popular. Again, it's another option for our customers so that they can order without going to the cashier or standing in line if they don't want to. Um, and it records all your favorites, it makes it very easy. So it's just one more thing that this new cafe will allow us to offer. Um, and then there's catering and there's delivery. And um, uh, while we do that in our existing cafe, once again, the new cafe will be set up better for us to, to uh, be able to accommodate that. So the competitive landscape has changed for us. What we need to offer our customers in Enfield has changed. And um, I'm really excited about this location as a, as a way of doing that. But in addition to the cafe and the appearance that it will have, the way in which it will function, the services we can provide, I think it's important to mention that um, if we are able to do this and we're able to stay in Enfield, that we're able to continue the employment of approximately 60 people. In fact, a few more people than currently are employed in our existing cafe. <coughs> so that has always been important to us. We employ 1,300 people in our, in our company. That's always been a very important thing to create those opportunities and to also be able to give back to the communities in which we operate. Um, Padera has a very strong, and I know our own company has a very strong feeling about that. Um, we will operate seven days a week, um, as we do now. Um, we'll be Monday through Thursday, 6.30 to 9.30. On Fridays and Saturdays, it'll be 6.30 to 10.30. And on Sundays, it'll be 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and so um, I just want to, I know that, um, that your primary concerns are the regulations and the requirements under your zoning ordinance. Um, I have a great deal of respect for that and for the work that you do. I know in my town, um, I, was, um, I served on our planning board for five years. I was also on our board of selectmen for nine years. Um, I'm very committed to that and to the work that's being done to uh, <coughs> kind of protect and enhance uh, communities. So um, I really appreciate that. And I, I, I hope that you will feel like what we're doing is something that you could be proud of as a community and that will add value. And the only last thing I would say is, I mentioned that our lease is expiring. So while those other considerations you have obviously are in the forefront, timing for us is very important. So I would just, as a business person, I would just ask that whatever you can do in that regard, I, I just want you to know how much it would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. I think I can speak loud enough to get into that. Uh, thank you. My name is Jim Bernardino with Bowler Engineering. Uh, I'm going to run through the site plan briefly with everybody um, before I turn it over to our traffic consultant to give an outline or a brief description of um, some of the traffic studies that have been done uh, for the project. Uh, just to give everybody a quick uh, overview on Locus, I'm sure everybody's aware of the site. Uh, we are an existing 44 acre plus or minus parcel that's located um, at the southwest corner of Elm Street and Freshwater Boulevard. Um, we are part of the Freshwater Plaza 
um, which is um, currently housed with a number of you know high profile retailers such as the Costco um, the Home Depot TGI Fridays and the like our, our proposal is for the Panera obviously but um, it will be situated um, basically almost in the middle of the plaza uh, what we've done is um, we looked at um, situating our development in an area that is non-disruptive to the existing operations of the um, current plaza. You'll see that um, we are located centrally in the overall development, but we are far further away to the most outskirts towards Freshwater Boulevard uh, and um, are located near primary entrances to the, to the site. Uh, currently, the site is accessed by a number of points. Off of Freshwater Boulevard, there's an entrance in. I'll see if I can point on the screen. Um, there's an entrance in, which is primarily for service vehicles, delivery vehicles, to enter the back of the property for deliveries. Um, along Freshwater Boulevard, we have a, a right-in, right-out restricted access. Um, further down, where our current property is located, uh, or the pad um, preparation, the pad site, um, there's a right in, right out access. As we go further down south along Freshwater Boulevard, there is an exit only, um, and further down, there's another signalized intersection um, leading over to the Costco. Um, I'll go into the zoomed in view. Um, now this is a just a colored rendering of the proposed development that um, we are currently uh, proposing. Um, as I mentioned previously, we are situated further away from the uh, primary retail facility located along Freshwater Boulevard. Oh, I apologize. And, um, and off the main entrance way, which is a signalized intersection. This will allow for customers to access the proposed uh, Panera site with no interruption to the existing uh, shopping plaza. Uh, presently, the area that we're in, uh, that is being developed uh, to house the uh, Panera is currently just a paved parking field. Uh, what's being proposed is we're going to introduce some landscape islands to basically box around the perimeter of the Panera pad. Um, you know, this will allow for uh, us to screen not only to Freshwater Boulevard, but to screen some landscaping uh, to the adjacent um, shopping plaza as well. Now, the requirement for us, um, we were required to lose 108 parking spaces as a result of introducing this Panera to this site. Um, that reduces the overall parking from 1,903 spaces that are currently existing on the site down to 1,795. Uh, as Mr. Nuff previously went over very briefly, um, you know, we are proposing to be compliant with all the bulk requirements as well as the, the parking regulations. So um, that in itself um, constitutes you know, an acceptable parking configuration and an acceptable reduction in the existing parking facility to support this project. Um, as I mentioned, we do have a main access drive coming into um, the Panera facility uh, from the main access drive to the overall plaza and um, in front of the Panera facility we have uh, 54 parking spaces that are if you want to consider that you know what will be utilized for the main operations of the building. Um, associated with the uh, Panera is also a drive-through which will house um, 13 queuing spaces uh, to allow for backup and the continue operations during the busy times. Uh, during staff review, we've uh, received comments from various uh, members. Um, what we've done is we've introduced a, what they call an escape lane. So if you change your mind, you forgot your wallet, there's an opportunity to get out of that drive through lane without uh, impeding other customers or having to jump a curb. Um, as part of the um, Panera, we've also introduced an outdoor patio area for 32 
uh, spaces. Um, that's going to be fully landscaped with um, uh, very aesthetic uh, amenities such as some sitting benches and architectural features for um, the tables and the like that are outside. Um, to touch base, we are uh, on the overall size of the building. We're approximately 4,400 square feet of a um, building footprint, which obviously will house not only the patron area, but also the um, kitchen and service uh, requirements. Um, we've also provided um, a trash enclosure, which is proposed to be a with, treated with a brick facade uh, to or to match the existing architecture features which can be further elaborated later on when nor describes the, the building features but the I want to touch base on how that uh, dumpster enclosure was actually situated uh, that was located to provide some aesthetic separation not only from freshwater Boulevard uh, in the main entrance way um, so that the main traffic that's circul circulating around the um, shopping uh, plaza, you know, is screened from the, you know, screened from the dumpster enclosure. Um, in that back area, you're also, it's also, you'll see it's also flanked by a couple of landscape islands, which provides some buffering and visual uh, separation from the um, other parking facilities associated with the remaining retail area of the property. Um, just to run through the overall comprehensive engineering set of plans that we put together, we did do a comprehensive uh, grading and drainage uh, plan for the site. Uh, we evaluated um, the drainage characteristics, which currently just sheet flow across a very large open paved area. Um, we are introducing, obviously, some obstructions, meaning curbs and buildings. So um, we were required uh, to, or it, it, it as part of the design, it was needed to introduce a couple of additional catch basins. So we introduced uh, some drainage infrastructures um, that are DOT um, specified, DOT standard requirements to collect um, the existing runoff as it approaches the site and we're connecting into the site's existing drainage system. Um, overall, we have a very minor reduction in the overall stormwater discharging from the site as a result of this project. as um, as a result of us introducing all those additional landscape areas. We're about 7,700 square feet of new green space being introduced to the site. Um, so ultimately that doesn't change the overall large percentage of impervious on the site, but it does change obviously the characteristics with the addition of new landscaped areas. Um, all the public utilities are available on the site. Uh, we did receive some uh, initial feedbacks from the Water Pollution Control Authority. Um, we've been coordinating with Connecticut Water for um, water service. We've been in touch with the uh, gas providers as well. Um, proposed uh, services at this point are um, going to be connected to the existing services being supplied to the shopping center at their entrance off of Elm Street. Uh, there's no direct utilities in Freshwater Boulevard, but a short thousand feet distance plus or minus away um, we are going to be able to connect into all public utilities gas water electric and sewer um, obviously to address construction related activities we developed a, a comprehensive stormwater ero um, and erosion and sediment control plan um, silt fence hay bales sill sacks on existing catch basins and the like so we've addressed ongoing um, construction activity potential impacts by implementing this plan. And uh, lastly, we've also introduced a comprehensive set of construction permits, uh, construction details, which obviously will outline characteristics and um, protocol for the actual construction activities. So pretty well defined um, as it relates to that. Um, again, um, uh, I'm touched real quickly on uh, a landscaping, but we did put a comprehensive landscape plan together, which uh, obviously uh, details not only the corridor that I mentioned about establishing the limits of the proposed pad, but we also have a very comprehensive proposal for landscaping directly adjacent to the building, as well as the 
uh, patio area because obviously we want to screen that and make that as aesthetic as possible for the future patrons of, um, of this development. Um, you know, with that, um, that is you know, the site plans in a nutshell and the development um, as it relates to the civil engineering <laughs> aspect. Um, we're going to go ahead on yeah. to architecture. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so we're going to introduce Dave Babnig from uh, NOR Architecture. He's going to touch base on, on what he's pulled together thus far. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, just want to really briefly touch on the architecture of the building. Um, we're really excited to work on this project because um, Panera has really evolved over the years. And now with the focus on good, clean food, we wanted to also have the architecture accentuate that. So we've selected a variety of different materials that are a very natural palette. Uh, as you can see there, we have uh, a number of masonry materials that we're introducing to the site that we wanted to really tie in the colors of the center. So we're using a variety of tans, browns, and uh, a white brick to accentuate the uh, entrance. With the entrance being kind of in a corner of the site, we wanted to really pop it out of the, the main building and uh, accentuate it with a series of, of large glass windows, in addition to adding some canopies to uh, protect all the customers from, uh, from any weather. So the uh, building form was specifically chosen so that it has good visibility from a distance, but also has an approachability uh, from a pedestrian level to encourage people to walk up to the site. Um, with the addition of the uh, large patio space, we feel that it's uh, accomplishing that just from, the, from a scale of the building. Um, in addition to that, accent lighting is provided um, throughout the site as well as throughout the building, giving uh, a really warm feel to uh, the building at night, as well as improving safety um, during off hours. Uh, and it will really showcase a lot of the accents that are in the building. So I touched on the materials briefly. Uh, there's a wainscoting that's uh, circling the building, and that's in that oyster gray that you see with a cap of the dark gray. And then the aspen white is used as the kind of entry element. All of the storefront glass is um, going to be uh, framed with uh, dark bronze metal, as well as the canopies themselves. Uh, the rest of the building will be an ephus painted uh, an off-white color, not uh, comp complementing the, uh, the surrounding center. And then we have some of the brand standard green in the awnings as fabric. On the interior of the site, um, as you enter the store, the first thing that we wanted to really present to the customer is the bakery. The bakery is such a crucial part of Panera. It's fresh bread, fresh, fresh pastries, and that's the first thing that you see. Um, you have two flanking bakery towers with fresh bagels, fresh bread, and then you also have kiosks, six of them, to serve customers during high demand or just customers not wanting to order directly face to face. The dining room is split up into several soft seating zones, um, trying to maintain a cozy feel without um, impacting the use of the space. So you have uh, three main zones, kind of right as you enter, can you tell me, just and the people, what direction are we looking at at that building? Is that turned any special way? Which way is north? That, that building, if you want to relate it to the site plan. Yeah. Um, well, I'd like, just tell me which way is north. I can figure it out. The north facade is the top right here. Okay. All right. It's on the left hand. So you enter from the southeast corner <coughs> right here in the vestibule. And you enter straight in, and you'll be uh, greeted by six kiosks. Okay. And then uh, the actual kind of point of sale stations there, with flanking bakery towers showing showcasing the baked goods. And you'll see directly into the uh, basically the bakery, and there'll be a baker's table as well, where you can see uh, preparations of fresh baked goods. Um, cold and hot drinks will be served right adjacent to it, and there'll be a community table which offers. Uh, combined seating for um, at a high top level. Um, and then there's also a variety of uh, four tops and two tops uh, dispersed throughout the space. Uh, there's a patio door that leads out into the patio 
um, which uh, offers additional seating. And then the kitchen space and uh, restrooms are all kind of uh, towards the rear of the space or the north side of the space. Here are just uh, black and white elevations showing basically the same information that I already walked through. And then we also prepared a site photometric um, just showcasing all of the, the lighting that we, we mentioned. So the buildings are on slab on, on grade? Correct, yeah, there's no basement, it's a slab on grade building. Do you happen to know if there's a speaker in the outside patio? Because I know there is one in the in the mall, Panera. Um, currently, we would be adding a speaker unless there's uh, regulations against it. Okay, thank you. Uh, getting back to the patio, the patio then is on grade, and we there was no drawing of the patio, so I don't know. And there were two large squares. Can you tell me what those large squares are on the drawing? I, we had no large square on the site plan? Well, no, I, th what? I think they're landscaping islands. Yeah, those those would be landscaping islands and then... Well, the well, see, there was no no elevations. I mean, there was no drawings that I could find. I talked to the planner today, if you filed them, or I would missed them. I would missed the arrows. Yeah, it, it, it shown on, on plan as LA, L -A, which, but if you look at the landscaping plan, on sheet 11, you can sort of see that. That is correct. Yeah, it's a, it's a landscaped area to break up, uh, so we don't have a large expanse of, of concrete oh, so patio. That's, that's not part of the patio, or we're basically enclosing the patio in in kind of a landscaped area, so that uh, you know customers can kind of feel a little bit more, uh, you know, not like so they're the in. So the patio would go around the. Uh, no, the patio is over here, and there's 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 greenery here, 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 and here. Well, that's, that that's why I wanted a separate, a separate plan for the patio. I, I had no way of figuring out what, that, what those were. I think if I could help out here is that the regulations in 520.2F actually provide that you're supposed to submit uh, samples of the furniture. There's a whole list of things that you would have to do as a condition of approval that you haven't submitted. So that's why the commission is like, asking for that information understood yeah we can provide that so information as, as they come in off the sidewalk from from freshwater they would walk uh, just on grade level right right onto the patio the patio is going to be separated from basically the the circulation path uh, with uh, landscaped islands and curbs no but the the sidewalk shown that from the like freshwater boulevard in this, this goes right up steps. to the patio no, that, that's sort of the back it goes up to the patio and it also shows as a ramp oh, it's just a little ramp and it shows a ramp that's why i i thought it was not on on grade i i did wasn't um need just touch and one of the ones also showed at the uh, handicapped parking there was a ramp up so i it doesn't look like it's on grade. Um, from the, let me sure I get this on. Just want to make sure I. You just uh, have to uh, identify yourself. Uh, again, Jim Bernardino with Bowler Engineering. If we're looking at the, oh, I'm not good without a mouse. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I got 11. Patio, well, number five. So is a patio ramp, and, and it doesn't say a, a fence. And six is a handicap asset access. Um, if you look at sheet number six, that, that's not a ramp. It goes from one to four. There seems to be that the architecturals of the patio and your site plan don't 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 match up. Well, okay. that's a ramp. I know. It showed a ramp. That's why I thought so, it wasn't um, on grade. Right. Yeah, but. So okay. yeah, what, what, I can explain that and obviously that, that's an easy coordination item to make sure that our architecture features are matching up with the civil site plans. Um, you know, as things were getting developed, architects made sure that the patio was very architecturally pleasing and it functioned with all of their um, <laughs> uh, amenities that they wanted to implement. Then I was challenged with a with the task of grading it out and making sure it all worked. Yeah. So, um, you know, with that, um, what we have is um, at the 
handicapped parking area it is a flush condition, meaning handicap accessible will come into the patio area and there will be a, a gentle grade leading up to the finished door. So there's no ramp. Oh, no ramp. Huh? Uh, so but when you well. do look on the western side of the parking stalls, you'll see uh, a symbol that looks like a ramp. Yep. So what we did was we introduced a ramp on that other side. It is ADA compliant, but that's not the route that everybody's going to be taking. Um, that's just to blend into the patio quicker so that all of the um, tree wells that are there don't have awkward slopes going across them and the like. So it was really, um, it was really a task of handicap accessible blending into these tree wells that are there that aren't going to have ridiculously you know, weird slopes going across them. So um, all in all, it's, it, it works out very well, but when you look at it, there's really no technical ramp that, for the accessible route that's necessary. The, the ramp was more to match up to the grades quickly so that all of the landscaping tree boxes, <coughs> uh, the tree wells that are there, blend very well into the, the patio with because everybody likes a flat patio, so we, we try to minimize any types of slopes across that. Well, you don't you don't call out any uh, any, any uh, topo numbers, but you in two places you say proposed ramp, one out out on the street, and then one at the door. Sure. So the word ramp is there twice, no, um, and I think that's the concern. You know what? I I, I do apologize. That's all right. I just it, yeah. No, you you are you are correct. Yeah, um, so. I'm, there, there is a ramp. I, I do apologize. I'm going to take a step back. Um, so th there's a step that's built into the, uh, or adjacent to one of the uh, tree boxes that are there. So there is a um, handicap accessible ramp um, off of the end of those parking stalls. Um, obviously there is um, a six inch ramp up with the flared end section so as you go up we're going to be a maximum one in 12 the side slope which will only be on one side will be um, one in ten we do provide the uh, detectable strips along the entire the front of the handicap uh, stalls as well that we made that change when we moved the parking stalls. So we had I have a question it. along that line, if I could, Mr. Chairman. No, go ahead. Um, on don't. the, uh, uh, it looks like that you get out of the handicapped stall and you're going, uh, you, you're going towards the, the drive-through and the door to the building is right there. And it looks like there's no protection for either pedestrian or wheelchair to your drive-through line, uh, lane, and that's why I, wrote in a proposed resolution for the commission that you you need to put some protection in there either a, you know a wood barrier or something but it looks like you know I'm saying you don't show anything there okay. it looks like you just have a walkway and you got a wheelchair in a wheelchair ramp because um, along the front we have bollards along the front for You're protection talking about, talking about along the side along the side yes we, we, we there's could no there's no barrier between I'm walking or I'm in a wheelchair and I got cars in the drive through Yep. Um, understandable. There is a, a grass area between the two. And we have a ramp down leading to the, the crosswalk that ultimately leads out to the public way. So um, that's what, uh, that's what we're, I, well, I was missing because being, well, having problems to distance walking. I think we but. need a better detail on how the wheelchair gets from the handicapped thing into the building and the separation between well, for, it and the drive through Well, we could uh, discuss that quickly. Obviously, there's two areas that we look at handicap accessible. Obviously, we have the parking stalls, which have a ramp, and they have a direct shot across the... Is there any way to put that well, uh, yeah. up? Cause, uh, you can talk, and we're looking at our yeah. maps, but it would help if it's... The public is also watching. I apologize. You just don't show anything. Uh, you show a crosswalk going across the drive-through, but then you don't show if I'm if I'm going in. You don't show any separation whatsoever in your on your drawing on uh, sheet five. It's five and six that I have some trouble with. So, when when you say separation, Roger, are you meaning uh, I, I want to understand what you're well it just if you're looking at this it appears as though you've got the walkway 
and then you've got the drive through and there's nothing there. I mean, I'd be looking for a wood guardrail or something so that a car doesn't wander out of the drive through uh, and pick off a pedestrian or a wheelchair trying to go in and out of the building. But there is a, the drive through is curbed on both sides. And there is a break in the curb for the, for the sidewalk to come through across the crosswalk which is identified and we've also implemented a stop bar and a condition there. So as the exiting traffic, if you look at sheet 5.0 on the um, enlarged plan, there's actually a 12 foot wide drive aisle exiting the drive through. Curb. I'm on the other side where the cars start through the drive through. The cars start through the drive through? the building. Yeah, that is a Okay, that's understandable. We're talking, going through. That right is a. There's a step. Talking to them, oh, not me. That's not, that's not at grade. That's a yep. step. There. There's a step at the thing. That is not considered an accessible route. What we did was we provided a route to supply the other um, parking stalls in the shopping plaza. So if someone comes out of one of the stores, they could obviously walk through the parking lot and gain a defined access point to the store, even though it's not quote unquote. In an accessible route. We're providing our accessible, we're meeting our accessible requirements by one, providing parking stalls directly in front of uh, our building with an accessible route to the store. If you put this uh, number, number five, put sheet five up for us, and if you take a handicapped person and park them in the uh, first the stall up where the uh, where the drive through starts. Right here. They park right in the first stall right here. Yeah. Right. There's a ramp right here. Okay. They're going to walk across the patio, enter, enter the door. They, they are not going to cross the drive aisle for the drive through So they go dire directly onto the patio, which is at grade level? Uh, at grade level, with a, the, you have to go up a, a six-inch ramp from the parking to the patio. All right, by, and but there's the, no barriers in between. It just, there's no barriers in between. What we've done is um, we provided some protection, protective bollards, so cars don't drive up. It's in, just a slope you're talking about. Exactly. Okay. It's just a slope, uh, an, an accessible slope. But. Yeah. So the regulations require um, that the only, you only exit a patio, that you have to enter the patio through the building. You have to enter the patio. Yeah, and you, want, and you have an exit only from the patio to the street. So if you're saying that the handicapped person has to go through the patio to get into the building, then you're going to have to rework that. We, we can rework that and speak with the um, architect to lay that out. Obviously, the, the patio is very large, and we've identified the seating area. Um, we're not proposing to, to fence that in at this point or anything like that, but we could definitely show a clear path from the accessible route that will not you know, impede on the patio area. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah. Instead of this, you got to enter here, come out here. Oh yeah. This is more. So if, 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 if you take a look at, um, if I can explain it a little bit more, um, the handicap, the accessible route where I'm drawing my little mouse going through. This area all up in here, as you come up the ramp, is a, if you, we don't call it a patio. We'll call it an accessible route to the building that's concrete and it has some sitting benches. Now that area from where I have my mouse from here, from where everybody access, down is the patio. Right. Um, that, that's what he's talking about. That's why we... It, it, we needed that design that we didn't have. Okay. We, we could definitely provide a little more detail and explanation as to where it, um, where it lies. I, I'm very confident that we could address the concerns well, yeah. of separating those um, you know, distinct Roger, paths of travel. Is it too much of, of a deal that we couldn't put it in condition to work with you on that? What I was uh, suggesting is on 15, you had 15A, which is say the patio must comply with 5.20.2F, and then they can rework it and submit it. I guess I, I'm not a huge fan of having conditions of approval that re get recorded on the land records that say, please work with a person or please do something in the future. No, what, what happened? 
Commissioner, is that um, these are the uh, conditions of approval, but then when the final drawings come in, uh, the, uh, the special permit that the secretary signs, uh, you may have revised drawings. For example, on here, they, the applicant submitted drawings that say uh, uh, dated X point XX point XX. So obviously, we wouldn't be filing this on sure. the land records that way. So, um, but it's a change in the in the site plan, and it's a change that we haven't seen. Right. I mean, I, I understand. I, not all this can happen instantaneously. Right. Well, it's, when it's we certainly talk about up it. certainly up to you how you want to do it. Yeah, um, I, I can assure you know the, the commission that um, I think this modification to the patio that would happen is more clarification than a site plan modification. Yeah, right. uh, okay, uh, yeah. Obviously, we do have the access accessible paths, and I think it's just more of showing and clarifying that. Uh, I don't think you'll see any type of. I don't think you see any substantial modifications. It's going to be more of, if anything, we might shift the table just so that we can identify those separate areas um, to the satisfaction of staff or whoever you uh, ultimately uh, assign the further review of this. Well, if, if the entire patio is not fenced in, what separates the patio from the sidewalks from that walkway into the building? Nothing. That's right. So. I mean, is it a regulation that they has to be fenced in with no alcohol? They don't have alcohol. If right. they had alcohol, they'd have to have it fenced in. Right, so it doesn't have to be fenced in. No. So how do you put an exit only from a patio Well, he'd have no fence? They could, uh, for the handicapped, you could just take that part, I think he said, and put a, a fence across right. that, that section. Well, that's what I'm getting. If they just did a railing or a fence, that little and yeah. kind of directed your walkway. That's that's fine. Nothing else is fenced, but if that's all it takes, it's a simple solution. Yeah, yeah Commissioner, you're right. Uh, the uh, regulations don't require the fence or the exit only if it's not if they're not serving alcohol out there. So yeah, I, if I, that's a no, condition. No, that's why I said that that we could leave it, but. Yeah. Right. Well, he had brought up that you have to have an exit only, and well, there's no fences, so. Well, they can leave with a coffee. They just can't leave with a cocktail. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just looking at this this openness. I kind of think it's more in the the liking of what we're trying to get that more it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. pedestrian. Yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. want to fence there. I, I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Go sit down on a nice. Yeah. Day and Have a nice cup of coffee. And what we've tried to do with the with the designs is not encapsulate someone that's in a cage so what we've done was we enhance the landscaping oh, with the trees, around so that yeah. with the tree wells so could, typically could you, you don't see facilities with trees right I in the front of the building the tree wells were I, I, I think it's could you do it with texture and in, in a pay in, in a sidewalk in terms of you know just a little bit of um, you know, we can so, something could be that. smooth and something a, could be a, a little different more texture or score pattern right yeah um, just a score like pattern that. so you know a, t a tighter score pattern might sort of you know, I think we could do that um, I don't without um, much of a problem our landscape architect is uh, very nifty so he comes up with very creative ideas um, so I'm sure we can come up with something that would be aesthetically pleasing to both Panera as well as you know acceptable to you know to the staff and to the Commission I have a question about the um, the landscape islands that sort of cage off, oh, separate the Panera from the rest of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a pro I don't know the history of this of these plans, but was there ever a proposal to have just one island rather than you know four separate entrances where people come down and then all turn? Because that that. Um, that's tough for that me. was part of what we looked at as the overall site and how it actually is cohesive with the rainy development. Obviously, if you put in a um, long landscape island, um, there's two things that happen. One, you're restricting access through everybody. You're going to be introducing another parallel cut through island that people come through. Um, you're restricting, um, you know, interconnection between the development. Obviously, there's going to be uh, customers that want to access both sides. So we thought that you know, saving the parking spaces and, and allowing for that continuity um, with the remaining plaza was more of a benefit than separating the two. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like it now. Now they found out what the uh, the patio and the operation. I, I, that's the problem with, with me going at the uh, like Panera's now is the distance and walking. It, it's a little Absolutely. bit difficult for yeah. you to get in there. Yeah, I, I know. I think the applicant you were going to do a, a traffic presentation at some point. I did have a question about. Um, the Let me finish, finish the building. Absolutely, uh, sorry. We'll did traffic last, I guess. <laughs> I have one question. In terms of your 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 trash enclosure, and in terms of it, it, you know, obviously you have access for the, the trucks to take the trash out on the backside of the trash enclosure, but you know, I guess the access for the the the, the cleaning crew that that gets into the container it looks like the door opens into their path of you know as they approach the trash compactor the door opens towards them you know would it be wiser to swing it away from them so that when they're walking they walk directly in um, versus I, I think the goal was not to swing it out into a traveled path let me just take a look though if we can make that change it's relatively simple um, no I, 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 I think we could definitely make that modification rehinge the door open it up well, it seems so you don't like have to you, close the door to get back yeah you, you so that you don't have to you know get you push everything past it and then come back and, and open the door and then you know pull yourself through no, so that, that when you open the door and you go straight through no I, I, I agree with you that's I because because I, I know you touched it briefly on the drainage system and the fact that you know and then again I, I sort of was going to ask you to explain that but you, you didn't mention the fact that there's sheet flow to the two catch basins that you're connecting to right now yes you don't have them connected you know there's catch basin I guess north and cast basin south but on the east side of the pro you know the area that you're working with and and those are sized all according to you know the the, the amount of volume of water that's going to be going through there yes because no yeah, again you don't have any sizes of any of your pipes so that you know, um, if, if I see, you know, an 8-inch, you know, if, if the outlet is an 8-inch and you've got a 12-inch coming into an 8-inch that's going out, yeah. you know, it, there's there's no sizing there that... that we, we, we do have, um, uh, currently, you know, our proposed mm -hmm. pipes actually do have sizes on them. Right. Um, so what we're connecting into is obviously piping sizes that are all larger all right. than what's there presently. Um, we're not changing any volume or rate of flow going to that existing system. So what we did was um, we took a look at the sizing of um, the pipes, you know, what we're cutting off and collecting, how big do those pipes have to be, and then we compared it to what's out there today. And obviously what's out there today is uh, bigger, at least one pipe size bigger than what we're proposing to connect. Because I guess the, the, the thing is, and again, I don't totally understand, you know, the flow of water, but before, if, if I had water fall, falling adjacent to Freshwater Boulevard, it would take a while for it to, you know, actually flow all the way to that catch basin. Now, all of a sudden, you're connecting it a lot sooner, and then you're, you're, you're piping it, you know. So basically, you have water that's used to fall and, and have five minutes to get to the catch basin. Now it falls and goes into a pipe and only takes three minutes to get to that catch um, basin. To, does, to does, talk about does, it, it's that, um, very does that little. Get <laughs> no, I, I, I can explain that and try to make it simple, non-engineering terms. Um, the, the flow that's going existing today is really generated from the pavement area. You know, not much of Freshwater Boulevard or even the grass area is flowing to this system. So you're talking a matter of a, a minute, a minute and a half for that travel to go across the pavement, existing conditions. So all we're doing is we're cutting it off halfway, putting it in a pipe. So rather than a minute of travel time, you may be looking at 45 seconds of travel time. So, um, and as a, a whole, this is a very large drainage system for a 40 acre site. You're not going to notice that. Generally, if you change well, well, I'm just paths, I'm just sort of thinking that, that one outlet that everything gets collected to, it's gonna get there faster now. And, and so that the pipe has to get, you know, rid of more water a little quicker. Well, than, than when, when you look at it this way, um, there's, there's two folds. Because when you look at engineering wise, that pipe is also getting a lot of water from upstream as well that we're connecting into. I, I, that I that no gets there in 10 minutes. So our flow is getting there sooner and getting out of the way before the big slug comes through. So there's uh, many different ways to, to look at this. Um, and 
you know, looking at it, knowing that at the end of the day, we're reducing what's going there today. You know, it may get there a little bit faster, but it's also a little bit less getting there. And it's only a matter of seconds. As, as long as it was considered, you know, like you said, I, I see one pipe in and one pipe out, you know, and, and so, you know. It, and, and just to let you know, we, we did put together a, a drainage memorandum, you know, outlining um, our methods, um, assumptions and the like. Uh, provided that with our submission. Uh, we didn't get any uh, negative feedback from the engineering staff, you know, on their review on that. So um, I would assume that everything we put together is acceptable. Pretty straightforward. You know, we're in development in the middle of a paved area already. So um, as far as the drainage impacts, you know, very confident to say that there are none. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Mr. Chairman, before we leave the topic of the building and the patio and the furniture, we would hate to have this continued merely because we didn't supply uh, a description or pictures of the patio furniture. So if we could, we'll provide at least a oral description and hopefully that is satisfactory to the commission. So um, in the hopes of, if, if we have a chance of closing tonight and getting a vote, uh, we wouldn't want that to be held up by virtue of the oversight of not providing, uh, you know, photographs or other um, evidence regarding the exterior furniture. Well, that's that's up to the commission. So we'll have to see what what okay. develops. So you can do that if they, if you do it and they accept it. That's up to these. Well, I guess I have a comment about stuff I'd want to see. I mean, just learning tonight about the other variances that I think the applicant would like us to consider for parking. I don't know if it's proper to consider. All I know is that our staff memo and the exhibit A that we got on parking calculations don't take into account the numerous variances and special permits. So I would like to see those. I also note that the resolution that we were given just this evening, which I would have liked, I understand this is moving, I would have liked more time to consider the conditions there and all the references inside. But even then, even the first whereas says this is an application to modify an approved special permit. If that's true and we are approving a we're modifying an approved special permit. I would have liked to see the special permit in my packet well, to know what. I mean, I understand that this is a new application, and I think it's I think it's a new application. Yep. But I want to see all of the historical background that lead to what's happening on this plaza. I'm willing because I talked to to uh, Roger earlier. It's up to the commission is to have a, a special meeting, and we we have several. If they have. They can get things together. It, it depends on how it goes. I don't know how the other people are going to go. As long as I can get four people together, uh, they can resubmit at that time and have a special meeting on another another night. We've always was done that because you know we can just, just for a clarification, Mr. Chairman, there are there are uh, seven regular members here, so n none of the neither of the alternates are voting, right? No. No. So Sarah wouldn't wouldn't be voting. I know that, but the 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 thing is, it's up to not up to me. Right. Well, so far I haven't heard anything that's going to stop me from voting tonight. I mean, picking out their patio furniture, I personally don't think it's part of our purview. I know it can be, but it shouldn't be. And you know, here's well, this the other stuff is small change as far as the patio goes and the the way the handicap get in there. Yeah. That can be no, taken that, care I, of. That I agree all, but that can be solved tonight. Yeah, oh without, yeah. You know. So uh, uh, let's continue. And you can do okay. the oral and, and, too. And, and, and by the way, as, as for the parking, the important thing is that regardless of how you calculate it, we will continue to comply. Um, whether you, whether we rely upon the original can variance. Can we continue on, on the building and, and can okay. take care of that please? Right. And we'll do parking last. I said that before. Okay. Right. Don't interrupt right, the rest of this. Yeah, I might as well just explain the patio furniture just so we have it out there. Well, it's, yes, go it's, ahead. Uh, it's metal furniture uh, that's uh, a, a painted or a finished green color, and then the tables are a metal base with a wood slat top. That's a teak finish, um, and that's uh, all weather resistant. It won't rust over time, and it's uh, pretty high quality, and it looks good. Are so. they anchored? They are not anchored. They are free-floating. And uh, so what, what what do you plan to do with them in the winter time? They get, they'll be removed and stored. All right. Well, are let's. There, are there umbrellas on the tables? 
Umbrellas are not proposed currently um, just due to the canopy, but uh, we do have an umbrella option as, as possible. I'm concerned about the wind. I mean, of course. Or well, yeah, they'll have to take care of them. Right? Right. They'll have to have somebody do that. Yeah. And yeah, that would be a, you know, mostly a ba building maintenance issue, and yeah, definitely the umbrellas are generally secured so uh, the, when the when it's not operating. In, in basically, in the winter time, then, or in cold weather, well, from certain certain time of the year, it'll be empty the, the patio. Correct. And by the way, the current existing Panera at Enfield Square also has an outdoor patio, so. It does, right. It's very small. So, yeah, so no. the operator has, first of all, he, he, they own 28 other Paneras, so they have vast experience. Well, I don't, they don't bring those in in the winter, though, I don't believe. I, seems yeah. to me I've been out oh, there. A, they are, right? mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so we're good on, the, on furniture? Box. Okay. And the design, and the, now that I know what the big boxes were, <laughs> okay, and how to get in there, fine. All right, so we're on, I think we're on to traffic. Is that correct? Uh, well, I don't know. That's up to you if that's where you are. Okay, but but if, if we're done with the building, we're done with furniture. Well, I think traffic. I, I is noticed the fire department wanted uh, hydrants uh, moved to a certain location. Has that been done? Yes, I, I'm, uh, we have provided a uh, response to comment memo. And uh, we have addressed all of the uh, staff comments, fire, WPCA, all those things have been addressed. Right, there the were pipe plans. sizes I read. There were certain pipe sizes were different. Uh, than yes, uh, those have been corrected on the revised plans. Thank you. I, th I think there was one item that I don't know if you had specifically addressed it. It's the concrete pad underneath your dumpster. Uh, I believe th I believe that the revised plants uh, also depict uh, what was requested with regard to the under base for the for the. Sorry. Okay, if you want to do, if you're done with all that, Roger, are they covered what you, you needed to cover? Right. Um, in the uh, draft uh, resolution. In the draft resolution, um, it's uh, it's an interesting uh, con uh, thing well, in I front of you because what you have is you have the adding a freestanding building, which you have a, a regulations regarding that says look at the whole site. The, a restaurant requires a special permit. A drive-through uh, is not specifically called out, but the commission has traditionally uh, uh, done it by special permit consistent with it's similar to what else is there. And um, then you have the outdoor dining uh, requirements. So um, in there were t two items uh, that were brought up with respect to the uh, this, the plan having to do with traffic and circulation. One is um, that the the your regulations require that there not be conflicts between pedestrians and vehicles. Um, and I give you the citation. Um, the is. The, um, there have been a lot of discussions about how to address that. I gave you the, the site plan tonight on the Costco building with the parking and circulation. If you look at that, um, and I'll just present this and you guys are going to respond. Um, in the, um, if you look at the Costco approved plan, it doesn't necessarily say that the only way you get out of that side parking lot on Costco is by going through the front entrance. Um, you could read it that there is multiple ways to get out of that um, thing. So I don't think we should necessarily say, well, that was what was approved, uh, because that's not clear if you look at that approved plan from 2003. Um, the, um, so what, uh, what I did in drafting the site-specific uh, conditions is I just said a revised parking and circulation plan will be submitted that addresses the identified site issues. Um, as you know now on the weekends Costco hires a police officer and they actually close off one lane in front of the building. Uh, there's no, there was never any approval from the commission to close off a lane so it's down to one lane um, moving through there. So. Um, how that could be addressed, there are multiple options. Um, 
I, I drafted a condition number nine that would so leave it to the applicant to come back and submit something that addresses it. Uh, there have been conversations even off, off, off the record tonight as to how they might do that. So um, that, however they do it is fine, you know, that's sufficient to the commission. Um, and um, then the second one was um, the issue of the left-hand turn lane, uh, which has also me, been back Roger? and forth. I, I, I have a couple of questions because yeah. Uh, you're you're specifically talking about Costco's entrance right. where this is actually further down right and there is a stoplight there so if I were gonna go to Panera's I would go to that entrance right no you're absolutely right and you could say one could say one could say one could say that Panera doesn't have anything to do with Costco, except your regulations say that if you're putting another principal use on a site, that the commission is to look at the circulation for the entire thing. And so that's why I'm suggesting that we don't hold up Panera based upon resolving the Costco issue, but I'm saying that we write it we put it in there as a condition, and uh, the applicant has suggested. I don't know how they want to address it tonight, but they've suggested various options of how they could address that, all of which would require uh, the State Traffic Commission to approve. So we could, you know, we could we could approve it tonight, subject to uh, to whatever it is that that they put forward and the commission finds acceptable. The only other question is is um, the the way the traffic light goes now that the, the Police, uh, the police traffic have suggested that they would prefer, there's a left-hand turn lane going in there, and the, and the way it works is if you're in that left-hand turn lane, you either get a green arrow, or you get green, or you get red. And what the police traffic officer is suggesting is the green phase of that light be removed, because when you turn on the green arrow, the, the oncoming traffic is stopped. If you're turning on the green, it's not stopped, but it gives the driver the sense that, oh, I'm in a left turn turn lane and it's green, I'm good. Uh, so uh, the police, uh, the traffic is su suggesting that it should either be left hand green or red. Uh, so that's for the commission to evaluate um, and um, uh, I drafted it ex uh, with the police department's request such that the applicant were responsible for the adjustment to the light to eliminate that green. It's, and again, that would require the um, State Traffic Commission to go along with that. Um, so uh, from, the stamp, from the standpoint of staff, the only, the only issues that remain are how do we address uh, on the site as a whole because we're looking at the entire state uh, state line freshwater plaza all the way from TGF Fridays to Costco <laughs> the that circulation and whether or not you feel that those two issues warrant being addressed and so I'm, I wrote a, a two suggested ways to address them. The applicant will present it, and the commission should okay, make well, up their own mind. Right, so let's listen it, to Thank let's you. listen to them. Okay, on what, Hold on. that's not a state yeah. road, so why does the state have to? Get all right, I, I, uh, let's not get I, into I, that. I will let be happy present, to address all that. Okay. Let them you. present the. Um, and may, and maybe we can start with the traffic light first. We we have a certificate from the Office of State Traffic Administration. It probably it goes back so so old. It was from the State Traffic Commission. So even if we want, even though this is not a state road, but because we have a certificate, and because we're adding square footage, we need to amend our OSTA certificates, which gives them jurisdiction over this light and all the lights associated. So I understand Roger's um, proposed condition, but the problem is is we need OSTA's approval to make this request a change. Our position is that this is a over 400,000 square foot center. We're adding 4,400 square feet of restaurants. If there were a problem with that free flow left-hand turn lane from Freshwater into our center, 
given the, let's face it, two of the biggest traffic generating retailers in America, Home Depot and Costco, we would certainly know about it. We don't think that a 4,000 square foot Panera is going to be the proverbial straw that breaks the traffic back that is going to lead to a dangerous condition. Um, so, and Jason can explain further what our, what our belief is, but we don't think it's warranted. We've had um, candid and respectful conversations with Roger about, you know, we have a different view from him and from the, from the police, frankly. Um, again, based upon many years of experience of an over, over 400,000 square foot center that we all know is quite busy. We don't think that a 4,000 square foot restaurant warrants a change in the signal timing, which could have a domino effect on the other traffic signals in the area. So, so that's our position. And I'm not saying we're, we're, we are foreclosing any other thoughts, but we want to hear what the commission's beliefs are, and Jason can, can address them more specifically. Now, with regard to the circulation of Costco, again, we have respectfully disagreed with Roger about about the, first of all, the need for it, but more importantly, whether it has any association with Panera. Roger believes, um, and I, I believe this is a good faith belief, that once you submit an application for a special permit anywhere on the site, that it, then the commission can look at any other condition on the site to determine whether something needs to be upgraded or changed. Our position is that this is a Panera that is separate and apart and has nothing to do with the Costco um, circulation. And uh, we are providing safe and convenient circulation to Panera. Um, the Costco circulation was approved by this commission in 2003. Um, we monitor that, both our tenants and, and the landlord, Bricksmore, um, monitors that condition. We, have not, we're, we are not aware of any complaints, any accidents, any lawsuits. We understand that it's busy, and that's good. Um, but we're not aware of any condition that is unsafe. Certainly, Bricksmore and Costco and even Panera has as great of an interest or greater for the safe and convenient uh, parking and travel and access into the Costco building and into, in, and into Panera. Um, we understand how vigorously Roger believes um, in these two conditions. Frankly, we would like to hear from the commission. Um, I mean, certainly, we would like to get an approval. We'd like to get an approval as, as quickly as possible. So um, if we can have a bit of a dialogue on those two issues, I think it would, it would be very helpful. You know, yeah, I, and, you know I, and I totally agree with you in terms of, you know, but I think that in terms of to be responsible and, and proactive in, in, you know, reviewing the planning of, you know, the shopping center right now, it, it would be irresponsible for us not to mention some of the, you know, the, the potential that, that exists out there and, and some of the, you know, the, you know, conflicts, you know, because, you know, again, I shop there all the time and everybody's always courteous and everybody stops, you know, to allow the, 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 the pedestrians to go through there. And, you know, and, and I'm amazed that they, they actually stop, you know, all the time. So it's working. Yeah. And, and it is it working. Works. And, 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 and I, but, but, you know, but I, I you know, and, it, you know, and, but I agree that, you know, if, if we at least mention it, it, it plants a seed in your head that maybe later on, if, if something does go wrong, you know, something could happen. And, and I think that it's, it's just responsible, proactive planning that, that is be occurring right now. And, 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 you know, and I agree with you that, you know, I don't see that, you know, if, if you made a, a drive, that middle drive aisle in the Costco area and right now, that would be so disruptive that it would totally destroy, you know, the, the, the flow of, of traffic that's there right now and but that sometime in the future you know it, it might be necessary and, and as long as that that seed is, has been planted at, at least you know we can acknowledge the fact that we are being proactive not reactive because if we're only reacting to something that happens you know we're not really planning and planning is being proactive I agree with all that. I've represented Bricksmore for years. I know that they are a very high quality landlord. I know that they would never want to do anything to create an unsafe condition for their tenants or their customers. Frankly, they would be driving customers and tenants away if they were to do that. So if we can agree that we can eliminate that condition with the understanding that Bricksmore will maintain 
oversight of that area and address it if it becomes necessary. But again, the history since 2003 or, or 2004, once this building was constructed, upon the approval of this commission, has been there's, there has been no unsafe conditions. Um, well, under, understanding that, that it's busy, but it's that's... It's not always to say that we do everything right. Sometimes we might make a mistake. Uh, the, the, the thing is, you go out there, and if you are out there, let's say, when the officer is there and the cones are up, it does change the traffic pattern entirely because you can't go straight through, let's say, up to the uh, auto center. I, I, I understand that that's a condition uh, that happens now, twice a year. That also, even during a regular day, if somebody is loading on a piece of furniture or a large TV, they also will block the exit going out. And I, there was a mess up there the last time I was up. It, the traffic was stopped because they were from coming from every direction. Uh, Given the state of retail today, the fact that there's actually a busy well, bricks and mortar right. store, that's you're a wonderful right, but thing. But that is a good draw. That, that is a great place to be. And yeah, I don't know and Panera wants to move in next right. door. Right. <laughs> even if Panera didn't come, which I hope you do. But even if Panera didn't come, Costco would be the same. Yeah. Oh, it's yes. not going to change Costco. <laughs> I'm with Rick. I go there all the time. My husband goes to Home Depot all the time. And it's a very busy but well-maintained parking uh, plaza. Okay. So. Oh, it is. But the traffic in front of the door is up at that end. But, right, right. But, that's but the that, thing but, is we're not addressing Costco right now. We are addressing Panera. Panera is what we're dealing with. You know, and yes, we can look at the whole property, but if the commission made a mistake or the commission did something with the circulation of traffic. It was a mistake. It was conditions at the time. It, well, uh, if whatever happened, why are we putting that responsibility on somebody who who has to pay for that? I mean, literally, that's going to cause something like that. We didn't like say that. it's Panera that we're asking. We're asking the owner of the shopping plaza. Yes, but to hold up or to put that condition on Panera is we not, to me, is right. not proposed to put it on Panera. That. No, nobody's... Again, you know, the, the only thing that, that, that I see is that, you know, we, we just want them to acknowledge the fact that, that it, it, there could be a, a possible condition there. And, and I, 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 like you said, I don't think that this is going to hold, you know, I'm, I'm not married to this and I'm not going to die by it. But, but I think that, you know, it, it, what we need to do is, is be proactive in our planning rather than reactive. And, you know, to, have, to look at the, over, the, the overall the function of the plaza and and define the fact that okay there is a, a defect whether it's a significant defect or a minor defect does it have to be addressed right now I don't think that it does but I, I think that maybe eventually it, it should be addressed but you know I'm not going to hold up it's approving up Panaria for that but you, like you said we're planting the seed and let the seed grow a little bit and, and if, if it grows enough where people think that it is a problem maybe it will get addressed at a future time but not necessarily you know we we shouldn't ignore it stick our head in the sand and say no it, it doesn't exist we shouldn't have it as a condition on here that that which is what there is a condition that says a revised parking and circulation plan will be submitted that addresses the identified well, site issues you when you get there. so that's right. what i'm saying right. i don't right. think i don't think that's necessary so right. that's that's what i'm talking right. about well, well the thing is it doesn't say it has to be constructed all it says is, is to develop a plan and and the way i read it is that okay here's your plan and when, when we want, want to act on it, we, we, we will act on it. And when we don't want to act on it, we won't. Well, then what's the point of a then plan? Then what's the point? It's plan. But, but it's a plan. But, but at least you have a plan. So it's something to look for. Well, uh, so I, I have. You, let's, oh. Okay, go ahead. I have a, uh, addressing the two, the two comments that we're discussing here. We're talking about spe site specific conditions 9 and 12. 9 has to do with Costco, 12 has to do with adjustment of the yes. light. Exactly. So for number nine, relating to Costco, it says specifically addressing the conflict between pedestrians and vehicles at the entrance to the Costco building. I see, that I understand and I agree with the commission's responsibility to look at the entire site, generally speaking, and figure out what the conditions at the site are. However, I, I read our responsibility as addressing circulation with respect to the proposed use. Our proposed use is Panera. It is across that, that whole aisle. So whatever's happening at the Costco entrance, which is at times treacherous, I would say. Mm -hmm. People zip along there, and, and it's wonderful that it's busy. I agree with you. 
But what's happening at that entrance does not flow over to how people will get in and out of Panera, in my opinion. I, th I see the only issue about circulation is if people come in that entrance and then turn a left into the Panera. But that still doesn't really impact, in my opinion, the entrance to Costco when people are coming in and out of the Costco. I see those as con two extremely locationally separate areas and conceptually separate areas. So I would disagree with that condition. I agree it needs to be addressed. I don't know how it gets addressed on this application. So that's my opinion. My next point is to site-specific condition number 12. Applicants responsible for the adjustment to the left-hand turn light. Now, I, I don't understand as a practical matter how that addresses circulation and traffic within the site. I see that as addressing circulation and traffic out on the road, which is not this property. I believe that property is owned by the town. Public health as well. Sure. Safety is, sure. is but our business. Sure. I don't understand. I, I, I believe me, I understand our mandate. Mm -hmm. But what I understand the applicant is saying is that requires an application to a state commission, which could be denied. And even then, um, I don't understand how we're essentially addressing, or, or by the condition, I understand the condition to be addressing the scenario where uh, leaving the plaza, it's sometimes hard to turn left. Now, that to me doesn't say that it's hard for me to drive within and around the Panera. That has to do with anyone leaving the plaza. And I don't quite understand how the commission could require someone to seek state approval as a, a site-specific condition. Now, this is recorded on the land records and should arguably not have to do anything with the applicant because this is a land use issue. It's so I don't, I don't agree with that condition, at least in my opinion. I agree that generally speaking, traffic is tough in that, in that intersection, mm -hmm. but I don't know that it's our duty to require or, or I don't know how this can be contingent because we would be approving it even with this condition. So I don't know how you could even do that. But to require someone to seek state approval for something that I don't know how to change a traffic light and I don't know how to here's, apply for here's that. Here's how you solve the problem. You have a local traffic authority. The OSTA will inquire as to the local traffic authority's preference. The local traffic authority can indicate to OSTA that it is their preference that, that we eliminate that free turn left and that you can only make a left at the dedicated left-hand turn signal. And if OSTA, in its wisdom, agrees with the local traffic authority, that's what's going to happen. If OSTA disagrees, it won't. The, uh, Simple. There's a recommendation from the police department that that light be changed. Usually we follow the recommendation of, of the police the department. Light, the light was installed as a condition of the approval for the Costco. And, the, uh, and if you look at the, if you look at that plan I gave you, the condition of approval to the, was that, uh, and and Costco installed that similar light. Similar to the high school where we required the the, that, the light we, and the state refused, and uh, that's what happened. Costco installed the light in front of Home Depot or in front of Costco, because there's two lights there. Right. The Costco intersection, it's it's crazy that's on a right. weekend. It Home is. Depot in front of Home Depot is insane on a nice weekend. Congratulations to the owner of the plaza. He's doing a good job keeping tenants in there. I see why Panera wants to go there. But the intersection where Panera is going, nobody's going to pull in the Costco intersection to go to Panera. Well, they aren't. You know, Home Depot, you may get a few people that cut up that way, but they're going there site specific for that for, store. For Panera, that's what the green light, how many of you have sat at a red light to turn left, and there's nobody around you. But you can't take a. And that's I agree. Because it's red. And yep, I agree with you. It's absurd. I mean, we're all adults. I we know how to drive. Yes. Well, when you have when you make it a dedicated turn only, and you can only make that turn, you stack the traffic up behind you. So when you have something as busy as Home Depot and Panera, and you do that to that light, you're going to have a stacking, which is what happens on Hazard Avenue with the CV, like because people take that left onto Freshwater, it stacks the traffic all the way up backs things up, people can't go around, and that's exactly what's going to happen there. But and we don't want that to happen. And it doesn't happen because you, th that light is the same way. There's a, a green light you can turn left on as long as the traffic isn't coming, right. and you don't exactly. stack up. And if there is a, a serious issue that arises, which I agree it's not going to with Panera Bread, maybe something bigger, then our police department can address it themselves. And get the problem taken care of. The, uh, in fact, I asked Roger for a uh, accident report <coughs> at Costco Light, and so I, I don't know. 
Uh, but I it? haven't seen. I beg your pardon. Did he get the report? Oh, I hadn't oh. seen. No, the, and just to correct the record, because the applicant keeps saying that Roger feels strongly about the uh, the light. The we have an, our responsibility is the planning office. We circulate it. It was the police traffic officer who requested this, and so we brought it forward on behalf of the police traffic officer in the entire several months that we've discussed this with the applicant, it didn't come up as an issue with respect to the planning office. Roger, so did, so did that the issue the issue came up the and the ARP. second issue the second issue with respect to the Costco situation, it's our obligation to to bring it forward. We brought it forward. We have a proposed condition. The applicant has talked about possibly putting in a right hand turn lane coming out of there is a way to address it. Uh, but it's entirely up to the commission. If you want to strike those two conditions, you strike them. That's uh, or you want to modify them, you modify them. But it's present. my responsibility Absolutely. to right. bring them forward. Absolutely. You did your job. Roger, yeah. did this come up with <laughs> ART also, I would imagine? Mm -hmm. But I, I'd also, I'm sorry? Did, did this come up at the IART about the light and so forth? So uh, the been, traffic safety officer. Right. So, um, so, but with respect to just for, for clarify for the record is the commission's put um, traffic light conditions on applications all the time and they go to STC and what have you, or what is now called the office of whatever, but we all call it still STC. Uh, that's like standard you know standard standard practice so i You're just going to do the same thing with uh, and, and you've been just like when costco went in there it said you have to have a light they went to sdc they got the light in there so i don't want the commission to think that you don't have the authority but i'm, I'm just saying that uh, uh that normally normally if you were asking for a change in a light you'd have some basis of doing that and we don't have anything from the police department that says there's a history of accidents there. Yeah, uh, we, I, that's what I would no, like. Okay. So, so, there's, so, there's so we nothing. can solve that problem too. And also a trip calculator yeah. that the police usually so, sit I and mean, do that too. Um, I'm, I'm sympathetic to that. Uh, the we, issue of the Costco, Roger, my responsibility to bring them? it let's, forward. Let's get back to them. But we will be doing the same thing on Route 5 North uh, whenever it comes back. <laughs> but. Let's, uh, let's finish with this traffic here. Okay, so so um, do we want to try to resolve these one at a time? I, I mean, it's can, up to can, you. Can, yeah, can, go ahead. Can, can we agree that we can strike the condition regarding the re, uh, specifically condition nine about revising the Costco parking? I think we're all aware of the situation. The landlords are aware of the situation. Costco's aware of the situation. We spoke to the Costco store manager. He has received no complaints. He believes that they that, that it operates in a well, safe. People are going to put up with it. They aren't going to. In fact, I don't even know who the manager is, uh, and I don't think they're going to back in the store and ask them. But uh, they aren't going to complain. They're they're putting up with it. But there is a problem there. If you, somebody gets hit and they know that we've talked but, about but, it, then you probably Mr. Chairman, will have a problem. There's there has been over a decade of history of this operating in a safe manner. So I understand- People come I, here because they don't want to go, well, I don't, up to West Springfield because that's so far back and you have to go through understood. a maze to get there. But we're trying to solve a, a problem that maybe doesn't really exist. Is it busy? Yes. Do people have to stop and wait, let people cross? Yes. That's the condition at any, you know, busy retail store. It's, I, frankly, I don't think but, it's... But the possibility of an accident or somebody getting hit, hit up there is that, great. That possibility exists in any parking lot, in any retail center, yes, anywhere in the not world. to the degree of there. If you're willing to accept but it the hasn't happened. it know. hasn't happened. Well, it hasn't happened, but... If, there, if we were proposing Costco tonight and you saw this plan, then maybe there's, you know, I would say, gee, maybe you have a point. But since 2004, well, since the, the store's the been mall, open, we do, and the owner of the mall, to a degree, is involved in this application. But that's what's let the, the other people decide on that. Actually, I think the reason it hasn't happened is people that go there 
know it's going to be like that and you go in driving slow because you know there's people walking out they're always going to walk out they're always going to back out well i don't go you, in that way you, anymore well, no matter which way you go in you're going to see that there so you just drive accordingly mm -hmm. exactly exactly you don't go in there like you're in a hurry to get lunch you know <laughs> right <laughs> oh. and it works and yeah. so you know I've People seen, follow the rules. Well, some do, and some the rest do. get close calls, but so far nobody's crunched too bad. Right. <laughs> and, and providing another means of, of, of access out onto freshwater, I don't think is going to solve the fundamental issue that Costco's busy, which is terrific, and people are taking their carts out to their cars. Expect that when you go there. That it's just an exit. People from Panera, they're not going to use that exit. Yeah. Yeah. Although I, I will tell you that I was at the shopping center at Costco's when somebody was pulling out of their driveway and somebody wasn't looking and they, 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 they did hit one another. But it was in the well, it wasn't in front of you know the, the walkway it was more where people aren't paying attention so you can't legislate stupid i know well that's what i'm saying is that you know it, it does happen and i happen just to be there one day when that did, did happen so okay we all agree so, that there's a problem there and and i think that and and and, 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 and again i don't think that it should d deter us no. from acting on this application that's right sorry. now so okay I, I i think there's a consensus. I don't know if it's unanimous, but I think we have a consensus on condition nine. So let's talk about condition 12. Why don't we just say that it is the preference of the local traffic authority and if you want to include yourselves, the Planning and Zoning Commission, that the free flow left be eliminated. I agree with Ms. Scott that there's going to be a queuing issue with regard to the left turn lane. Those, uh, and again, those lanes aren't long enough for that. Yeah. Right. I, we all agree. And we do have the state traffic um, accident data, and it shows that, I don't know, Jason can interpret. Yeah, uh, Jason, is this on? That's right. Uh, Jason Adams from McMahon Associates. Uh, so we did take a look at the available data from the Connecticut DOT, and what that shows is that at the signalized Home Depot intersection over the past three years of available data, there were 10 crashes. So just over three crashes a year on average, which uh, given the traffic volume out here is very low. Um, and, and that generally indicates to us from a traffic engineering perspective that there's no existing safety deficiency at the signal. It's not to say that a crash hasn't happened or won't happen in the future, uh, but that there is not a, an existing safety deficiency. And that's generally how we proceed. Um, looking at this project and the number of vehicle trips that would be added to the intersection, we wouldn't expect the safety of the intersection to become any worse just because the Panera is there. This is literally 1% of the square footage of that existing center. So we're happy to live with the conditions of approval. If we can eliminate condition 9 and either eliminate 12 or modify it, that we leave it in the hands of the people who know best, which is the Office of T State Traffic Administration, while expressing the town's preference, or or at least the police, the police preference. I'm good with eliminating it, because we can always have our police department address this at a later. We can always have the police address it at a later date if it becomes a problem. But oh, yeah. this intersection is never going to be half of what Costco is. Yeah. Oh, and no. putting a uh, red light there does not solve the Costco situation. So I'm good with eliminating that condition. And the police always are available to, mm -hmm. to make any of those changes anywhere where they mm -hmm. want to and, yep. and recommend them whenever they want to. So it's really not on us to prompt them to do it. If they wanted to do it, they could do it anyway. I, and to be honest, I think if they did that at the Costco intersection, they'd make things worse, not better. Yeah. No, and I agree. So I agree to eliminate it. I don't think it is necessary. Um, All right. So <coughs> we yeah, got that, consensus that on them both. Entirely different light, anyhow, than the one at right. Costco's. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. That, that light has breaks in between because there's allows cross traffic. Mm -hmm. And with that light, too, you know, it used to have a high volume of mall traffic, which you really don't get anymore. So, you know, that has eased, I think, that intersection as well a little bit. So, um, a little bit, but you know, yeah. not, not tremendously, but a little bit. So at least you don't have that volume coming but out of the mall. But if it changes, again, it's up we to the local police. 
So, so now where are we? You got. We're at. Uh, eliminating 12. Is 9 that and 12 were eliminated. About? Okay. Well, at some point, you got to go to the public. Wait a minute. I, I, yeah, right. I just want to get track of what we're. So the public knows okay. what we're doing. And you want nine out of there? Nine and nine 12. And 12. Nine yeah. 12. We're not going to renumber them. <laughs> it would be 31. Yeah, 31 conditions. Because okay. are we going to include the clarification of the patio so with a different kind of scoring, just just for you know architectural reasons, or uh, are we well, satisfied? Should be a plan on file. Yes. You know, are we satisfied with that? You know, it doesn't need any delineation to to that. I want. They do a nice job, um, you know, the Panera's that, that they have now is always spotless. It looks nice, the, the, the uh, furniture and the uh, umbrellas and stuff, they're always in pristine condition, so um, hopefully, you he know, did a visual you'll uh, gain our trust by just doing the same that. thing. Yeah, so we'll eliminate that condition that we did discuss, so, okay, that's gone. Okay. Put in the public. Well, sure. his consensus then is what he wants is generally, I guess, is yeah, those nine two, and 12, nine, nine and 12. 12 are out. <laughs> and, uh, and on the patio, you want nothing except his visual description. And so, as long as the secretary has, the secretary has taken that down. Got it. Okay. They can always and send us a drawing just so we can be uh, removed and stored during the winter. Results. Because a lot of times, if it's well, there's no section of the regulation they have to comply with anyhow, so they would. I'm sorry. There's a whole section of the regulations that have to apply with anyhow, 5.20.2F. So. You got who? Okay. All right. Is there anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Last call to speak in favor or against this application. Roger. Do you no, have I'm good, more? Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry? I said I'm good. You're good. Okay. Then I'll close uh, public hearing 2904. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the application public hearing 2904 130 Elm Street Panera's um, standalone building <laughs> platform at, at, as a as the draft re resolution that was prepared for the commission by the planning um, department with the uh, 31 conditions in the recognizing that we're going to eliminate condition number nine and we are going to eliminate condition number 12. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, I do. Yes. I just want to say that um, I love the Panera. I've done I've done the mobile piece where we've gone and ordered on there, so I totally understand that, and that has changed with the times. I'm very glad that we will have a, a store that will be freestanding instead of having to go into the mall and deal with all the traffic and stuff, which I really don't have never liked. Um, and the kiosks i mean i know what it's going to look like because i've visited the other um paneras around the state you know different ones and i know those ordering kiosks are neat it's smooth it's it works you know they're it's a really good business and i'm i'm thankful that you're staying here in our town and i'm thankful that you're investing in you know building a building that will be here for a long time so thank, thank you, very you. Much. yeah i'd like to add to that as far as that goes because difficulty in walking the distance uh, where the location? I'm sorry. They deliver. Oh, I know. <laughs> no, that started. <laughs> you don't have to. But, <laughs> but <laughs> and, and the, the, having the drive by and, and uh, on a level and not have to go through the traffic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, not only do they do a such help. a great job, you know, in, in present in their presenting of their uh, food items, they also donate what they don't yes. use yeah. to very yeah. good uh, networks, and I think that that's amazing. 
I had a friend that was on pickup and delivered to the places that were required. Yes, it's one of their. It's it's wonderful, and more people should know about it. It's a really good thing to do. I should have mentioned that. I'm sorry. It is. It's it's a great that you do that. And the people, a lot of people, aren't aware that you do. But any other comments? When are they looking to be open? <laughs> oh, I mean, there you are go. They, are they Tomorrow. shooting for this year, <laughs> Christmas? Are you? I'm hoping it's going to be this year. I don't know. We're going to have to convene. We, we want to open as quickly as we can. Are you yeah. going to have any gluten free items well, on your menu? Let's not put it off any longer. Let's go. Yeah. Please. Yeah. I, I, I just want to mention the fact that our planning department and, and you know, commend, you know, Roger and Raquel and you know the, the rest of the department that you know they they did identify a lot of you know punch, you know items that that we need to be notified that we need to be informed that you know these things you know uh, occur and need to be recognized in allowing us to make that decision as to what we need to do rather than just discarding these things and saying oh you don't have to think about this you don't have to think about that in terms of you know we, in order to be make knowledgeable decisions we, we really should be considering everything and you know I just want to commend our department for doing that right it, it, it is something that the property owners have to keep in mind and then consider the possibilities I, yeah, I, I want to just to say that um, the planning department spent literally hundreds of hours on this thing, bringing it to fruition. So um, I don't want anybody to think that because we're down to two items that We've you know, heard we, that we were putting forward. For but uh, let's it make was, everybody happy and uh, somebody. Let's call. Let's call for a vote, please. Motion to yeah, it's already been done. Okay, well it's been approved, but. <laughs> Second. All those in favor, <laughs> <laughs> those, those opposed, those abstention, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm for it. Oh, okay. I hate they Seven, seven zero I'm zero. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. For, Thank you for yes. do, doing this for, for the right. town. They delivered. Oh, I know. I know. But I, 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 I have a trouble because I like so many of them. I like to know what they've got baked for the day. For the, That's Thank you very much. I know. We do it at work. Oh, you could do it. Roger, site plan, SPR 1745. 1745? SPR 1745. The uh, applicant uh, control modules uh, want, uh, requested that it be postponed so that they can work out the issues with respect to the fire department. Uh, motion then then on the floor, please. Motion to the table. Yeah, but uh, table for whatever. <laughs> so do we put it off? The uh, the motion should be for two weeks. I, I don't I don't know whether they can resolve them in two weeks or not, but we'll bring it back as soon as they're resolved. Well, uh, mo motion for two weeks in. Uh, Roger, what does CDD yeah. stand for? That's, uh, that's uh, must must make a decision by. So uh, okay. okay, by June the 9th of right. June. Yeah. Just checking, thanks. So we need to be to yes, cognizant. That and they requested it be tabled so they can grant an extension. You have that in writing. Okay. Yes. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we table SPR 1745-89 Phoenix Avenue to our next meeting in two weeks right. on June 2nd? 7. 7. Second. Motion made second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Roger, uh, any report? Yeah, I have, okay. uh, oh, right. I have one requested administrative approval. Well, we aren't there yet. Oh, okay. No report. All uh, right. Well, we're approved oh, yeah, for no, a report. Now, now we're on approvals. Go okay. Ahead. Well, for on the report, you have uh, that you have four workshops coming up. You all got that notice of that. So there's one next week. 
Uh, there's actually two this month, uh, and then there's two in um, no, in May. Like Would you send out an email, please? Yeah, we'll send it out. And um, um, also, there are four or five major projects that are coming in any minute now. Uh, Pride is coming back. Uh, the Villages is coming back. Um, and there's uh, two others that... Huh? Uh, Target, uh, four million dollar renovation of Target, uh, which is a major um, plus for the uh, for the mall. Um, and um, so there's a, a bunch of things coming in. It's very very busy, um, and uh, so it's good. We want to be busy. Um, with respect to um, the. Um, 496 Enfield Street, I met with the uh, applicant's attorney and we've agreed on all of the items that need to be uh, contained in an application to the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission and so we expect that to be coming in shortly. Um, and on the administrative approvals, uh, 17 Bacon Road um, is an empty building. Uh, we, we, do have, uh, we do have pictures of it. And um, in, in an effort to work with the applicant, uh, this is a building that currently encroaches over the line into its neighbor, and they will have to give us an as-built drawing. They've got a building permit in to, um, to tear down the, in the portion of the building and encroaches over the line and to rebuild it. It still wouldn't meet the setback, but at least we'd eliminate the encroachment. Uh, the building has been vacant for a long time. It, um, the use is an allowed use uh, by site plan. We have a software uh, vendor who's uh, currently in Springfield um, and would like his lease is up and he'd like to get in there as soon as possible. Um, so the, we do have a site plan previously uh, and we will get an as built. Um, at when they complete the renovation, uh, it's operated. The building will operate exactly as it always did previously. It's basically a change in tenant. Um, so I'd like to ask uh, for permission to um, sign sign the building permit, and then we get the as built. Um, when it's done, we'll get a another business moving into Enfield uh, and a vacant building uh, back occupied. If you have any, I have pictures here if you want to see what the building looks like. Well, uh, okay now, questions for him. He is asking for uh, administrative approval. Uh-huh. Uh Thank you. Uh, what company used to be in there? Uh, Sarah, you'll have to be voting because uh, yeah. Kenny's out. And also Mary's out too, so Linda will vote. Linda will vote. No, gone. she's not Mary's out. Gotten, and no, Ken Mary's is gone, so you've got to, Mary and Ken are out, so you can sit both of them in the back. Who, who's the other alternate? Well, Ken, we do. I'm not hearing what you're talking about now, so. This is the original site plan. And uh, there's an encroachment over the line. We only have one alternate. So no, they're. Uh, Sarah's. Sarah's Sarah, Sarah, Sarah and, and Linda. Two. Oh, I keep Linda's forgetting Linda. I think of her as a. Just because she's a vice chair doesn't mean she's not no. an alternate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. So, um, yeah, Linda will vote on this, too. So what. What we're doing this is we're working with them because, like, we could hold it up until they did the work you and it? gave us a site plan, and then the tenant would be long gone and couldn't move in. Or um, so the building would operate the same way it's always done. Here's a picture of it. Sneaking back. Um, and come on down. And we will get an updated as built. So I think it's a reasonable approach. Yeah, he's got somebody coming in from yeah. another town. Yeah, I'm Springfield. Okay, right. which part is he taking off? The, the he, what he's doing is he's taking the center portion of the building and the other two units 
will be for either future expansion of him or if he wants to put another tenant in there, he's agreed he will come back to the yeah, Didn't that you way. say that that would, uh, the one is over the state, over the line? Though. Yeah, so the building currently on this site plan is over the line, so they're going to correct that. Correct the site plan or correct they're, the building? They're, they're, they're going to actually knock down this addition and rebuild it on on the, on, on the property. On the property. Okay. But, and then, so rather than have them give us a site plan now and then give them an as built later. Well, that's why I said. Uh, so, what we're trying to do is to work with them. On that saying, picture, which. Get a, I'll get an as built later, anyhow. What part of that picture are they tearing down and, and moving? Well, it's on the front of the building. I don't know. Oh, so it's not shown? It okay. It's not really, They've well, been it's working. It's really not them. shown, but it's, yeah. it's in the front. Okay. Of it. Okay. Okay. So Any problems? If, if you're okay with that, uh, uh, it would help a business get in there. Sounds like a plan. Sir, you got your You're back. You're out. Right. Okay. So, so Sarah. She's voting. Sarah. Sarah. Sarah's voting. Okay. So, so now, just so, so the record is clear. Now, Commissioner Scott is back. She's caught up. I'll be seated. Uh, limited grades. Yeah, Sarah's Sarah's seated on this now because. She's um, back. What about Ken? Ken is recusing. Suit your pleasure. We just need a motion okay, to authorize motion, administrative a approval. A motion to approve. I'll make a motion uh, to, go ahead. to authorize the uh, director of planning to administratively approve the 17, 17 Bacon Road property that was described at tonight's meeting. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? 700 is unanimous. Anything else for administrative approval? No, I think we're good. We're good. Anything for the good of the order? Uh, just that I've enjoyed working with the commission, and um, I hope to uh, continue to do that, and uh, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, okay. I guess is there another motion? Right. No? Mary? I am waiting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, <laughs> all in favor? Sorry. Boy, We're all in boy, favor. Boy, boy.